Hello and there welcome we to the captain's table, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Berserker One, Batman Shelley, your humble host at the in Space Bartender here at the Astro Pub. Your space bar at the end of the universe. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. We got a good one for you. For those of you who've never seen the Captain's Table or heard of Captain's Table before, and that's my cat breaking things. Um, could you stop, cat? No, nah, she can't. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is a podcast where I bring people from all over Star Citizen Universe to talk about Star Citizen. Uh, and uh, sometimes with theater craft, sometimes we look at new, the latest news reports, and we're just kind of all over the place. And we're the mm -hmm. second oldest running podcast in Star Citizen. Um, we, I mean, we, well, yeah, like a lot, a lot of old people come on yes. the show, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been we've been around for now eight years. The first mm -hmm. episode was uploaded to, to, to YouTube on March twenty eighth, twenty sixteen. You know how many episodes it's been? I'm uh, not a clue. I haven't even bothered checking. It's over more than one. <laughs> more than one. Uh, yeah, more than one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I I tend to <laughs> do at least forty. Uh, 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 at least forty a uh, a, a year. Or so. Or 40 50, times 8? 52 weeks in a month, one podcast a week, every Saturday. But I tend to only get about 40, because sometimes I have days yeah. off and other things like that. So That's Too many numbers, too. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm asking people oh. to do math on a weekend, which is not a, never a good idea. Yeah, uh, I, don't need, I don't get paid enough for this shit. So it's at least 320. So, uh, yeah. Oh, freaking bad, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's changed a lot. Uh, but I, I made that comment last time, and a lot of people were like, That's... You know, like you're you're not you're not the oldest creator. I'm like I didn't say I was the oldest creator. I said this is the oldest podcast that I know of, the second <laughs> oldest podcast that I know of. No, I just I, heard it came out of your mouth. You said you're the oldest creator. I am the oldest creator. I am <laughs> I am actually a, a billion years old, and you can't prove it otherwise. So that, thus I am old. Um, Mark Thomas. Yeah. There we go. You still have <laughs> hair. You're not a billion years old. Yes, yes. It's just it's just it's just what's what happens when you're a uh, when you're when you're a god. The hair always stays there. It just sometimes goes white from all of the power. Um, from the godliness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, getting back on topic, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, a, a new topic, something that just came mm -hmm. up in terms of the last... Just the last showed week. up. Surprise! It showed up on the on the roadmap um, mm -hmm. and, uh, this last week, and uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be discussing it. We'll talk about modularity. But before we jump into the ship modularity conversation, let's start with introducing the guests here. We'll start with... The person below me in here, uh, Mr. Axis0096. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? Where can they find you? Okay. My name is Axis0096. I am a Twitch personality and YouTuber as well. Well, YouTube streamer, I should say, mostly. But you can find me at uh, both uppercase Axis0096 on YouTube and Twitch. And I do believe my camera tried to freeze. You're fine. For a split second. It's lowercase though on Twitch for some reason. Should it should still pop up, but we'll see. Mm. Awesome. And then we've got the uh, the Salt King of Stanton, the Sultan of Salt of Stanton himself, Mr. H C Vertigo. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? And where can they find you? Well, I'm a Twitch streamer that does things on Twitch and occasionally YouTube and sometimes Star Citizen. I've been branching out more into like uh, variety streaming these days. We've been enjoying Pacific Drive, which is a game set in the Pacific Northwest out in the Olympic Peninsula. So that's a pretty cool little survival crafting extraction game. And of course, we're 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 kind of hibernating, waiting for Star Citizen the next patch to drop. You know, all these exciting new features, but the current gameplay is kind of like snooze fest right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I've been so enjoying. You can find uh... me so I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've been enjoying uh, the uh, the overdrive stuff. It's been a nice little yeah. like little 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 goal thing. So yeah, change of pace. How is Pacific yeah. Drive? That looked like a really um, fun game. It is. It is fun. Uh, if you like looting, crafting, survival, extraction, it's decent. You you got a car, a station wagon. You drive around. You you loot. Get you get out of the car. Right, walk around. You don't want to get too far away from the car because it, it's kind of like Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. You have all these anomalies you have to avoid and whatnot to kill you. Um, and then, of course, you have the extraction, which is like uh, Apex Legends or Player Knows Battle Battlegrounds. We have this giant wall of radiation that kind of slowly shrinks until it's like this point in the middle of the map. And then, if you manage to survive long enough, you have another wall of radiation that comes in that's even much even stronger that basically just insta gives you. Uh, and you have a shop you go you teleport to when you extract from the map that allows you to use the, the materials you looted from the map to craft and customize the uh, station wagon. 
even more. So you can go deeper into the, into <laughs> different new maps, new wagon. levels. That's it's great. it's great. I I'm enjoying it. Um, it's it's a bit. The plot is a bit like uh, Firewatch, where you don't actually see another person. You just hear radio messages from other voice actors and whatnot. So it's kind of voice in the darkness kind of tropes. Nice. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm enjoying the gameplay. I I recommend it. It's one of those games you probably want to watch someone play like the first hour of to see if like you're even going to be interested in. Uh, because I know it's like some people like more action packed stuff, and I don't really find Pacific Drive is like challenging me a lot. It's not like Elden Ring or Sekiro Shadow Die Twice, where it's like I'm having to like white knuckle the controller to like survive a boss and boss fight. Mm -hmm. Like there's been there's been touch and go situations, but they're you know, few and far between if you're prepared properly. It's more mm -hmm. of a casual but fun experience. I wouldn't say casual. Like it's 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 not hard. It's not like super hardcore where you have to bring your game face, but it's not like super casual where you can just yeah. sit back and listen to like like a podcast and play. Like you have to you have pay, to pay attention. attention a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, like somewhere, was, somewhere between those extremes. I remember growing up telling my parents, I love a good station wagon adventure, mom and dad, mm -hmm. so this one's <laughs> right up my alley. There you go. Uh, Vertigo, and where can they, or like, what, when do you gen generally stream, Vertigo? Uh, at 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. my time. That's Pacific Standard Time, the, the Seattle, Los Angeles time zone, up on Twitch uh, most days, except for Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, very infrequently do we put content on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I need to, I need to work on that. I've been saying I've been working on that for a long time now. Uh, but I pulled off of like uh, Twitter. I don't talk about that anymore. It's pointless. Um, Instagram, HC Virgo on Instagram. You can find me there. I try to put cute little clips up there every so often, or or meme posts uh, for people to laugh at or have fun with. And occasionally I post on Reddit and Spectrum as well. The community hub that exists. I don't even know if anyone knows about the community hub existing on the. That the Robert Space Industries website. That's a yeah. that's a conversation in and of itself is how CLG has <laughs> spent all this all this money and time to to build a community hub that they don't utilize and no one utilizes because CLG doesn't give us a reason to. <laughs> I mean, like I mean, it's what, not just what, a reason; it's just do? like accessibility, right? Like it's yeah. it's buried. If anything, the community hub should be on the front page, yes. right? It should be at the it should be at the part of the top bar. Like here's what people are doing here's what youtube videos are coming out it should have like a staff pick of the day or a week or something yeah like exactly. here's, here's a video that a staff liked like look at this space yep. tomato gaming did a podcast recently or uh captain burks did this you know overdrive event this funny clip happened yeah. here's i'm pretty sure like this i'm pretty sure yeah, you hire this guy or... yeah. <laughs> i'm pretty sure once once server meshing is in the game the website will be the longest running issue <laughs> I like I like how server meshing is holding up issues on the on the website. Like, yeah, <laughs> we're using that as an excuse for everything. No, What's like, wrong with your car? Like server, server meshing's meshing. like seven years, right? The website's like six and a half. So once yeah. server meshing is gone, I'm only complaining about the website. It's well, like the, the reason why the, the website map. is getting getting in arrears is because Turbulent is now no longer working on the website. They're now building server meshing. Mm -hmm. Put All Turbulent right. back on everything. Uh, and last but not certainly not least, we have the the tomato of the space, Mr. Space Tomato himself. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? Where can they find you? I am a space tomato. I make videos mostly, um, YouTube, YouTube stuff. I got three three channels right now. Um, we have the regular Space Tomato channel, which is just like kind of updates and gameplay and what's going on with Star Citizen. Uh, second channel is more like podcast, deep dives, kind of long form stuff, and then we got a third channel for gameplay. That we just started um besides nice. that though i do stream some on twitch and youtube post like kind of the same sort of stuff on twitter actually it's kind of just updates about the game what's going on with features and some hot takes every once in a while a little bit of back and forth with paul you know how it is yeah um and then <laughs> that's that's mostly it you know we're on instagram and tiktok and stuff but those aren't as active so do what you will but youtube's the main place Listen, I've been trying to I've been trying to update on TikTok, but they broke something, so I can't actually like edit videos and export it to TikTok, and it just like it just refuses to accept it. I'm like, all right, and I'm just not gonna use TikTok, I guess. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, honey, honey handles that, but we just haven't been doing the short form as much recently. Yeah. Um, just focusing on you know what what's actually working, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with that all being uh, kind, of, kind of being said, let's talk about the big reveal that CIG plans on having ship modularity first arrive in Star Citizen in 3.23.x. 
according to their own their own uh, mm-hmm. kind of parlance. So it will be out sometime after 3.23 launches, with the first ship being the Retaliator. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's uh, the Retaliator gold, gold Standard, and it's only going to have two modules, which are the... Uh, the torpedo cargo module and, and the, the cargo. Yeah. So, uh, so the, the, and of course this, this is a uh, big news because it's an additional to 3.23, but it also almost kind of soft confirms that CIG plans on having uh 3.23.1 be the, uh, the Invictus patch rather than a 3.23 because, because mm-hmm. that's, that's the only reason why they do that. <laughs> if they, 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 yeah. they could do that. So makes sense uh, for the retaliator to, get renewed at Invictus. Mm-hmm. Hint to chat, buy the Retaliator base while you can. Because well, that price may or may not change. Oh, it's going to go up. It's I guarantee you. Uh, like, see, as you raised the price of the Hornet just before the Mark II released. Oh, and we get Kitty Picture now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, another Kitty Picture. Is that She's a new a, one, Paul? Yeah, it's Kit. <laughs> she uh, explains it. She I love black cats, by the way. Yeah. I had a black cat when I was a kid. It was I love that thing. The, the the story of Kit is that she was a kitten who just wandered into our up to our, our home in the middle of mm-hmm. one of the hottest days. Her and her sisters were under our car trying to mm-hmm. stay stay cool. And so we started to like feed them and give them water and that kind of stuff. Oh, so she kinda like make sure they didn't, you know, suffer because they're they looked like they were abandoned. And uh when we gave her water and food, she just strolled straight up into our our our, our um our yeah. garage and just like i i hear i'm here now this is me <laughs> you, like, oh, you were too? adopted i was adopted the cat distribution system yeah so and and we were gonna like collect her and her sisters and take them to a shelter because like you know their mother had there was nowhere to be found and uh uh and and uh cam was like but black cats hardly ever get adopted can we keep mm-hmm. can we keep the black one and i was like yes yeah, that's fine we can keep so we named her kit after eartha kit um who was one of the first cat women um, because mm-hmm. she has these kind of bat ears on her head. Uh, so, uh, and she turns out that it was very appropriate because she has very Eartha kit at, um, attitudes about everything. Mm-hmm. She's very, <laughs> how many, how many cats do you have? Uh, we have three, we had four. And then unfortunately our, uh, our tabby uh, had cancer and we had to put her down. Oh, so, uh, so uh, we got her right before she, she passed away. So, now, now she's running the house instead of her, and is uh, a complete menace to society. Comfortable so. with it. <laughs> and that bull- they, they, cats, cats have this 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 life cycle, right? Of like bugs, where you have like pupa, larva, in the adult stage. Mm-hmm. Like cats are, is like cute, cuddly kitten, velociraptor, and then adult senior cat. Yeah, but it's like <laughs> we're in that kind of velociraptor kind of like age, where they're, they're tearing up some... everything and just beating up on all the other animals in the house. <laughs> there are uh, also I, some cats that have better podcast presence. Yes, and Kit does it. Yeah, she does it. She's just chill. She likes to sit in the back of my chair and just hang out. Um. So, with that all being said, we're gonna talk a little bit about modularity as it stands. So, mm-hmm. of course, we know the retaliator is gonna be the first what, one. Comes what in. modularity? <laughs> well, what I mean, modularity in Star Citizen. Well, that's the question. That's a good question because. What do you expect to come after? If CIG manages to hit the retaliator and modularity in 3.23.x, what do you expect to what do you expect to be next in the modular Ooh. modularity? Go ahead, Space Vader. Ooh. Ooh. The Argo Cargo. The MPVV? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, is that the only that one was, you think? Was, I feel I feel like I that's mean, a meme response. I feel like that's a that's a meme response <laughs> no, from no, years ago. It was on the it was on the video at the end of the you know, the end of last year, like they put the retaliator and the Argo on there. And I feel like the only things they were on there for was the modularity. So yeah, I feel like that makes sense. Um, I don't think they're going to, I don't, I just don't see them getting rid of the retaliator and, and then suddenly updating every single ship, you know? Yeah. Like, no. like I kind of thought that master modes was going to be one ship at a time and it was going to take forever. I'm surprised that that was sort of applying it to everything all in one patch, but mm-hmm. I don't think that'll happen with modularity. Okay, um, Vertigo. Do you think of can you think of any other ships that might we might see is it maybe this year that are that have modularity that besides be the Retaliator, besides um, Retaliator and the MPUV? The big one would be the Vanguard, but I don't see that happening. You don't see it? No, because right now the Vanguard is is suffering from success. The fact that it works, 
Mm -hmm. it, it, you can get into the sea, fly around, shoot the lasers, and it blows up. It destroys. It blows stuff, other stuff up. I don't see them needing that for Squadron 42 that much. Like, they need the Vanguard to force Squadron 42, but they don't need its modularity for Squadron 42. The Retaliator, I think the reason why the Retaliator got modularity because it was an outdated asset. It's like one of the oldest assets in Star Citizen that hasn't been touched in a long time. Yeah, it needs help. So it needed, it needed to have its... Uh, basically, anything with, like, a vertical-oriented um, airlock has to have that change to a horizontal airlock. Because we're we're no longer doing the you climb up climb up or down a ladder to enter a ship through an airlock that we're not doing that that design thing anymore. Uh, the three hundred I lost it on its on its vertical uh, oriented airlock on its redesign. The Cutlass Black lost its vertical airlock on its redesign, and the Retaliator had vertical oriented airlock. So its redesign is getting to a side style airlock on like the right side of the ship, mm -hmm. the starboard side of the ship, I believe, is where it, its airlock is going to be. And there's one other ship that has a vertical airlock, the freelancer. Starfare. Star, I forgot about the Freelancer. Yeah, mm -hmm. it also has a vertical airlock. And the Reclaimer. Yeah, the, the, the Reclaimer, Reclaimer as well. Yeah, it has a vertical one too. That's well, it has side ones too, so they could just delete that vertical one off the Reclaimer and just yeah. Yeah. pretend it doesn't exist. Or redo because oh, and the uh, uh, Constellation has a vertical one as well. Uh, yeah, but they could delete that because they already have the side yeah. ones that exist. Yeah, so. the side ones in that thing too. So, I think the tally got modularity because it made sense they were going to update up do a gold standard pass and they're like hey we're doing a gold standard pass while you're in there let's get the modules like some of these it, the module they added for the retaliators is like oh here's a cargo module it's just an empty room that you can snap cargo to like that's that's that is some of the most low effort stuff imaginable so when you come in you ask me vertigo what other ships do you think that cig is going to add modularity for it it's just like I don't think they're going to add much more modularity this year because they're, they're prioritizing Squadron 42. The Argo Cargo makes sense because you have the MPUV, right? Mm -hmm. Which has two variants, two variants, yeah. which are basically the same ship with just different rear ends. You have the, car the shuttlecraft version, which has a bunch of seats in the back and a little bit of cargo space. And then you have the cargo version, which has one seat in the back and a bunch of cargo space. Well, more cargo more space. More cargo space, yeah. And those two, the, those two variants. The only difference between them is the rear module, which is basically detachable. It's like a four S, yeah. one of those eight SCU boxes. It was supposed to be always too. Yeah, like that was always supposed to be the case, where it's supposed to be detachable and and yeah. movable. So, yeah. um, and, and it's also like, I, could, I could, I could easily see like a version of the Argo MPUV without that module in the back yeah. unloading like hull C's. Yeah, like it just it floats up to the ships and grabs cargo boxes. Like has like a little tractor beam, like size one tractor beam that can pull pull in like one SU or eight FCU boxes, grabs onto them, docks with them, and then hauls them into like a a hangar or something. But yeah, Angry. other than other than that, I can't see I can't think about any other ships that CIG would like need for Squadron. That would be mm -hmm. the focus that needs gold standard pass. Like while you're there, touching up this ship, let's add some modularity to it, because a lot of the ships out. that. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. Well, like, a lot of the ships that need modularity, like, don't really need modularity. Like, the Vanguard is, like, the big one I can think of, which the which they sold Battlefield upgrade kits, the Bucks, for yeah. all those years ago, and they never bothered to sell those again. And then I'm trying to think of other modular ships that were released at any time past that that need modularity. Caterpillar? Yeah, but they never added sold modules with it. Yeah, exactly. They were really... They, I don't... They kind of... Threw out some ideas for modulars, modules for the Caterpillar, but they never really did anything with it. The Redeemer mentions in its art, in its release, you know, on Spectrum when they released it, like mm -hmm. what, two years ago, that there is modularity planned for it, but as it is designed right now, they have to gold standard it to even make it equipable for modules. So as it stands That's, right how, now, how old is that post? About oh. two years. So. Two years from two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. About okay. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Okay. So maybe maybe the Redeemer. Um. What else? Uh, the the do, the but do you think any of these? Do you think any of these are gonna be this year? No, I don't. It's like I long term. So, Paul. Okay. Yeah, I think we're. I think next year, like after Squadron Forty Two releases, CIG's probably gonna knuckle down, and do a little bit more. Uh. If but. They... Yeah, if they release the Galaxy next year, that'll probably have modularity with it. Oh, yeah, I think the Galaxy will have it because you'll have all three modules for the Galaxy. Yeah, they already sold the modules. 
ease of making modules. The Redeemer, yeah. you have to literally redo the interior of the frame. The Caterpillar is already kind of segmented for modules. A mm -hmm. little. So you can just cordon off areas to make it modular or separate the modular section from the frame. Don't also forget that the control segment of the Caterpillar separates, so it's technically a module of its own. Yeah, yeah the, cat, the, 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 the Caterpillar has a ship attached to it. Yeah. And then they, the, 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 the actual cargo hauling part is the module, right? Yeah. That you're, yeah. you're docking to. And that, that, need, that needs to be a thing that CIG needs to work. We already have the, the docking system for the Constellation, which is kind of like, you know, the Constellation Merlin docking thing that can yeah. kind of work for that. But you need to create a system where you're actually controlling another ship with yeah. a ship. Yeah, it's right. that, the, Mer it's... the Merlin would have to control the constellation when the Merlin docks with the constellation. Yeah. That's the kind of technology that CIG would have to develop, and I don't think they're really into that right now because yeah. squadron, I, right? I don't think it's very. It's I don't think it's too far off from what they already have. It's just a matter yeah. of time. It's 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 a it's a it's a time, time and investment. effort and the desire to actually code that stuff. Uh, right? yeah. With it all, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, we're kind of like at that weird point where a lot of what Star Citizen is is just does CI is it a priority for CIG not a can it work can it function is Man, it possible it's more of all we've been at that point for 10 years you think so <laughs> but it's but it's an alpha I mean I think I think since 3.0 we've been at that point yeah like I, they've I, been triaging what they need to add yeah that's what it feels like you know every I, time a question comes up they're like well yeah we just don't have the, the devs for that yet I, I they're, they're working on they have the devs they're just working on other stuff i'm sure there's people in, in yeah. that work for cig that want this stuff to get done but chris roberts signs their paychecks and he yeah. tells them what they're going to be working on because chris roberts has more important things besides caterpillar modularity and you also always have to have a, a hierarchy of needs like what's mm -hmm. more important yeah yeah axis do you have any other any chips that you think you think of that might be making it to the end of this year Module. a couple were mentioned in chat and i can agree with them uh Carrick, but I don't think it'll be this year like the other, like our other two guests, Vertigo and Tomato, are suggesting that Carrick would require quite a bit of work. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see anything beyond the Argo Cargo MPUV tandem or the aforementioned, you know, gosh, I'm skipping. Vanguard? Here. The Vanguard could be a possibility, but. It's the same situation as the Redeemer. They're almost, mm -hmm. yeah. Wasn't the 600i supposed to be modular as well? Like you could swap I've out the terrain and explore. I've been thinking Yeah, I've, I've heard yeah. about that, but I, I don't think it was ever fully confirmed. Uh, the way that I look at it is if CIG sold modules for it, those are probably going to be the most priority to build shit Now the it. Galaxy does have modules, but I yes. still see it as part of the RSI line. Remember, they're working on the Polaris right now. Yep. The next is the Galaxy, so that's probably going to be tier two of uh, the module ships. So we might get another large modular ship with the Galaxy. As to three, who knows? Carrick, I'm open to ideas, guys. What else do you think? Well, I, I only think, I, like, I'm, I'm going to be the controversial and say that the ones that are probably the most first ones to get modularity are obviously the Retaliator, because mm -hmm. we're only going to get two modules with Retaliator. So we'll probably get the rest of the modules throughout the year, drip feed, you know, like the, the dropship module, the mm -hmm. the habitation module, the, those sorts of things. Like suit drop. <laughs> then the, oh, got, yeah, the, the Gladiator was supposed to be modular as well. Did all we remember of them that? have. Yeah, but I mean, like, like let's 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 be realistic. How how often is everything that CIG has said that maybe get gets? That was gets, a really old statement, though, old yeah. years ago. The, the, the they said, they said the, they supposed said the, to have the torpedo oh, room you could gosh. take off and put some cargo capacity in there. Oh, the gladiator, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gladiator. yeah that's, gladiator. The gladiator get, needs I needs a suit recharge. <laughs> oh, they said the con Connie was going to be modular too because you could swap. Uh, they were out they were throwing stuff, all so. they, were, they were spitballing so much stuff back in those days. You can't trust uh, anything gosh. from those days. Old so days one CIG. Mm -hmm. So so like the, the the things that they've actually sold modules for, I think are going to be priority, with one exception, which is the Endeavor, because the Endeavor is always the exception because mm -hmm. that ship ain't coming out <laughs> until the game is fully <laughs> launched. Oh like, man, that game is the last ship that CIG ever makes. So that sort of thing. Whenever I say that, someone gets mad. So if you got mad, please post in the comments that you got mad that I said that uh, that, that, that that's the case because, oh, you know, man. rage post. Give me your rage. <laughs> Explain how CIG is messed up and they're going to go. They're going to fail because they're not going to release the Endeavor in 2026 when CIG oh, releases 1.0. 
Yeah. Give me my science. <laughs> now, I require them to build the science, you know, profession. <laughs> With that being said, Paul, before we move on to the next topic, what all modules do you think they're going to sell besides possibly the talent, you know, the tallies? Yeah. I don't, I don't think we're going to see, I don't think we're going to see many, many modules this year. I feel like this is the year that CIG kind of puts that feature in and gets some of the basic ones they need out, like the MPUV, the Retaliator, and probably the Galaxy. Uh, and then once they figured out how those, these all work and how they, if, if people are interested in it, then they'll move on from there. So there's um, probably something nice that'll get unlocked by it too. Like yeah. I remember what was it, a year and a half ago when they started to get the whole C working and they were like, yeah, now that we've got the whole C cargo spindles working, modularity is good. We can start doing modularity. Yeah. It's like, what's mm -hmm. going to get enabled when they get modularity working? I do. You think we're going to see another module sh like ship, like the uh, like the Galaxy in? Um, um, uh, why wouldn't they? I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna spend all the time investing to build the technology, why not have more modular? Oh, ships? I mean, I mean, I'm sure, yeah. I think we will. But I mean, do you think we're they're going to sell like another concept ship that's module like that we had the Galaxy this yes, year? Yes, I will think it, they will. Will it make money, Paul? Uh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, <laughs> Well, then. Um, let's 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 kind of kind of move on to the topic about modularity in terms of other ships, possibly. Um, mm -hmm. So l instead of going like a listing all the ships that could possibly because all of them could. Uh, yeah. Let's think about like, what is the extent do you think that CIG will go to to with modularity? Do you think they'll they'll do something like go through the entire lineup of the ships they have and add module functionality to everything they possibly can? Uh, do you think that they're going to they're going to only keep it to like modules to, to the ships they want modular? Like like how crazy do you think CIG is going to go with these modularity stuff? And I'll start with you, Axis, on this one. I think there's going to be a, both a size and resource constraint, as well as probably a you know what am I trying to say? A use of the ship constraint. You're not going to have a salvaging military ship, you know, that's heavy firepower and salvage. You know, you're not going to have a technical battleship reclaimer model. That's not going to make sense, in my opinion. You know, if it like, makes money, it'll make sense. I mean, right? if it makes sense, it makes sense. Yes, you can sell it. Blending roles, unless it actually works. You, you get what I'm saying, Paul. Yeah. Blending it to the point where it's like, well, is this a battleship or a salvager? Or is this medical or, you know, medical or mercenary? Yeah. The Apollo straddles that line, you know, the medvac. Yeah. You can straddle mm -hmm. the line as a offensive medical ship, but it's not designed to be a heavy hitter. It can fire a few shots to defend itself and then retreat. It's not meant to be a battle cruiser. I think some people are gauging modularity as a way to expand the use of the ships, and those should be the main takeaways from this. Okay, but not to the point of overexerting what the ship's role is. So, keeping you, you think you think that CIG will try to keep it within the role specific. Um, I think so too. Okay. Yeah, because I, that's I think there is some exception to that rule, but I think there's an exception to that. There is the rule. some exception, like you said, like the the caterpillar. Right. The caterpillar is a great example because uh -huh. the caterpillar is 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 a cargo ship, but it's also a Drake ship. So uh -huh. the, the the idea of the caterpillar having like a a a fountain of new modules to to put into it, crazy modules yeah. you can think of. Does it makes sense because it fits in with the kind of Drake does everything a little bit okay, but not everything. I'll read you a Drake so. module concept for oh, every we can see Drake. That. Thing. How about a module that converts the top of the Drake? I'm sure you've seen the meme picture of yeah. the Drake mini Kraken pillar. Yeah, yeah, the Kraken pillar. The Kraken pillar. That module would sell a lot of money. People love their pocket carriers. You know, it uh, it would compete directly with the Liberator and be a ton cheaper than a Liberator. Mm -hmm. Or at least you could Even, you could buy it and then buy it and buy the module and gain. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, instead of instead of having yeah, to pay for it up front. Exactly. Yep. So, 
Uh, all right, uh, Virgo, where do you see CIG going with with modules in the future? I be, I definitely see them adding more ships in the future. They're gonna have modularity. Uh, yeah. CIG has always made money off of selling whole ships, like two hundred dollar ships. Yeah, that's what CIG wants. And what they want to do is they want to do stuff like the Galaxy, where you get si kind of side grades, side grade. science, medical, exploration, cargo, combat, bounty hunting, that kind of stuff. Um, that's why we had the, the Zeus come out that had like three different variants, but they weren't mm. modular. That's, that's where the real money is. Like if you want all three Zeus's, you got to buy all three, but you can't, you know, the galaxy was kind of a weird one-off where it's like, Hey, here's modularity again. Yeah. Remember that? Remember that kids? So yeah. for CIG to go back and like add modularity to a caterpillar and whatnot, they'd have to have a reason to go and gold standard past the caterpillar. Yeah. Um, and then I don't think they're going to have like all this, like the, a rainbow spectrum of like modules for the Caterpillar that does everything. Like you're going to have extra turrets and then you can have like a carrier module. No, it's going to be more in line with the Caterpillar. Like the Caterpillar is a cargo ship. So the data running, you'll have a data running like server farms. Maybe you'll have like some extra car cryo units you can shove in there, but it's not going to expand the Caterpillar into like a battleship or anything, I don't think. It's okay. going to be more cargo hauling, more specialized cargo hauling for the Caterpillar, I would imagine. So more like like turning a caterpillar into like a uh, like a starfarer. Yeah, it would be like cargo. you can have fuel refueling module. That's kind of a crappy version of a starfarer. I could see yeah. that uh, because I think the re I think what the CIG wants from a lot of the Drake ships is you're going to have the Drake ships that fight and you have the Drake ships that support. Yeah, the caterpillar feels more like a support ship that could kind of defend itself. Same with the Cutlass. The Cutlass has teeth, but it's it's fragile. If it's just by itself, you could beat it up with most both combat ships. But if it's yeah. with like a Buccaneer or a few other ships, a Gladius, and then the Cutlass is kind of harder to pin down. Okay. That kind of stuff. Uh, Space Mano, where do you see CIG going with 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 modularity? You think they're going to go crazy? We're going to get a bunch of new modular ships? Do you think you're going to try to make everything modular? What, what do you think? I'm a little torn because on one hand. It feels like so far getting getting to this point, they've definitely leaned on modularity a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it, but <laughs> they've also seemed to be pretty like hesitant about it. Uh, definitely about talking about it too much. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's because they know how much of a problem it could cause in terms of balance. Like they're trying to draw a lot of emphasis to each ship and the role it plays and what it does. And like when you start to make ships able to just easily switch a role relatively easily go to a ship hangar and spend a couple minutes on it um then you kind of i don't know it, it it might start to complicate how they balance those ships against other ships or how I don't, they compare them i don't think it's going to be like you can swap it out in your hangar i think it's gonna be one of those things where you may have to take it eventually to cousin crows to actually like yeah, swap the module but, out yet a shipyard or something just the i just the idea that it's just a couple minutes you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you have to fly there and then you can maybe sit down at a go sip a tea, get, get some shopping done. I don't know, but like you mm -hmm. can basically trade your ship out in a day. Mm -hmm. And I think that adds a little bit more consideration to what each ship does. Right. So I don't know uh, in terms of from that angle, I don't know how hard they would dive into it. But on the other hand, like obviously they want to do more ships where they can have things be switched out because of a lot of what Vertigo said, um, isn't it not only is it less work for them, to be able to make the galaxy and then three modules rather than mm -hmm. three different ships. Um, but it also, it probably makes it easier to just like work on that one ship and not worry about the other modules. Like if the C series, if the, not the C series, the one series from Crusader, I don't know what you would call it, C1, E1, A1. Mm -hmm. If those were just Straight. modules, how would that change how they handled the ship? Right. You know, the, so I don't know. Modularity is always one that's given me a little bit of question. So I, I, have, I have my hopes and I have my fears about this. Mm -hmm. uh, my hopes is that CIG will start to use modularity as a means to bring up older ships to new, new standards or to new horizons. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for instance, it, it, a lot of ships are built with like kind of let's look at the Spirit, which isn't older, but it's a good kind of similar where like. If you I look don't at the forget spirit, that name. Spirit series. Yeah, it's spirit series. Uh -huh. the, the, the front of the spirit is the same, I think, for all of them. For, for the C1, the A1, and, the, and the, the E1, they're all the same, the very front cockpit area. Uh -huh. It's the back area that changes. And I think the E1 has the biggest change because the A1 is just bombs. 
It's just a cargo yeah. bay with bombs, and then yeah. the, and then you have the cargo bay. The cargo bay. So um, in theory, you could plop that cargo bay out and then replace it with something that's exactly the same cargo bay with some some other little doodads added. It wouldn't be as much work because you already have that kind of little Lego piece built to just kind of modify the insides. Now, I'm sure there's still clipping and other problems that can happen and other weird bugs that can happen from that. But that feels like a very simple solution to the problem uh, rather than having to, like, build a bespoke new ship uh, using the same thing. Uh, so I could see something like the Avenger, which already has three different versions of its, of its uh, or, f- like, m- multiple versions, but it's got the Titan, the Stalker, and the... the um, mm-hmm the war- warlock are all like effectively just take the backside out and replace it with something else. Uh, I could see the Avengers starting to get, you know, new love in, in life. I could see mm-hmm. ships like the, uh, uh, the cutlass. Yeah. The cutlass cutlass just could start getting modularity as well, rather than just being it's the bespoke versions. Uh, yeah. the, the, the reliant, the, the Mustang, the, like the 100, Possibly even the 100. Yeah. Uh, the 100 is a little different because I think a lot of the interior is the same. I don't know how you'd modify the interior much from the 100. Yeah. Kind of Maybe hard points, but not points. Yeah. Uh, I was just trying to say, Ellens. Um, like the freelancer, th- those sorts of things. Like like I could see a, a modular for the freelancer base that's just swaps out the cargo for seats. Mm-hmm. How 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 far does, does that go, though? Because like the freelancer, yeah. it's like different thrusters. So like, are you starting to? Well, I mean, like you wouldn't, thrusters? you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to because it's just the interior would be these modules. So mm-hmm. like the difference between a cargo version of the Freelancer and like the uh, a regular cargo version of the Freelancer and like adding, changing that out with seats in this in the back probably isn't that much of a change. And it's a nice swap so that CAG doesn't have to build a bespoke version of a transport Freelancer unless they want mm-hmm. to. Um but, so, I, but it gives them options to update the older ships a little bit, uh, like with, with some new touches to them. Based on that, would you think then that they're going to start releasing a lot less variants? Uh, yeah, I think I think they'll 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 instead of having variants in the sense of like like what we have just the same ship but it's slightly different. I think we'll see a base ship with some modules attached to it and then like a special ship, you know, like the E one is the special version of the spirit with the, the, uh, uh, is it the, the, the Marky Mark that's the special version of the, or is it the cargo version? That's the special version of the Zeus. Um, there's like, there's like uh, one that's cargo one is drastically different, but they all are a little bit different on the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I but think I mean, what you're thinking of is options. Basically what you're talking about is similar to, it's a different game series, but the Gradius series, where you collect different parts and upgrade the tree of power-ups to get different weapons and load pay, load loadouts, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's similar to that. What you upgrade to is based on your choices. So it's very similar. And, so, and trying to make uh, an energy. Yeah. Well, Ch- Chad is also bringing up that and then now that I'm thinking about it, mm-hmm. engines. Engines could yeah. be something that's modular as well because CIG has already showed off that they can do that with uh, the unique shipjacker ships in Squadron that they showed off. The ones that are just basically oh, yeah, yeah. engines the, the, with the, the weird cutlass that has stuff cut off on it. The weird yeah, Mustang. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that M50 though, that's that was like that was on the roadmap. That was the major point. modularity. Engine, modularity, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I I can see some aspects of it becoming like the engines, I could see the engine stuff being 100% the main draw. Like they'll just start swapping out engines to do unique engine versions. So you stealth uh, you engines, have, low yeah, engine. which would be completely different sizes or different, different looks to them. So you can swap them out on, on the fly. Um, yeah. VTOL adding more VTOL swapping out the, uh, the, the, the maneuvering thrusters to other different versions of maneuvering thrusters. Cause they kind of have that system. Advocacy um, spec. Man, that would be that would that would be a lot. That's yeah. getting it in like ship customization territory. Yeah, yeah. but I, I I can see the same system being working. Now the problem I have is that I can also see CIG abusing the system mm-hmm. because 
there's a lot of pressure for CIG to do uh, like better versions of ships that have already passed. So like the Constellation is a great example. I can see CIG, instead of doing a Constellation, like a new Constellation, like this the F7C Mark II we have, um, instead of doing a new version of the Mark VIII of the Constellation or whatever it is, what they'll do is they'll say the 2955 uh, Constellation, and all it is is just a module that swaps out the interior for a new, new, new <laughs> interior. Oh my god! So I mean, like I was, no. I was joking about that when CIG released the Hornet Mark II, right? Yeah. I was mm. like, okay, so when's the more Hornet Mark V coming out? That's going to be even better than the Mark II, right? Yeah. They're just going to keep selling this new, the same ship over and over again. This is going to be better than the last See, ship we bought. I'm really hoping that because that was always true for the Hornet, right? I'm, yeah. I'm really hoping that they don't start actually just applying that to other ships. I, I don't think they will, but I do. I could see something like the Connie Mark, whatever being just in a, a module update that you can get for the change out the interior of a ship mm -hmm. so that it's, they can so they can keep selling the Connie every year. Mm -hmm. And because it's a module, it's separate cash, so you don't you can't get to CCU it, so you can't do your crazy CCU chains. Yep. You, you have to buy it separately and but then install it. So see as you can make more money. Good. Well that's why Some that's why like CIG the did the uh, that's why CIG did the F F eight uh the way they did with the uh the gold ticket event that way you couldn't get yeah. CCUs to it. Yeah. Same with like the F7A Mark II. Like that's why they did. So you couldn't CCU chain to it. You had to buy. You had to own. You had to CCU chain to the Mark II, and then you had to do the game event to get to the Mark the Mark II FA. Oh um, god! Like, Someone so, in chat brought up a javelin Mark II. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, uh, delight. That's uh, delight's got this. What I'm saying is that like the that that instead of selling you the Mark III, they'll just sell you a module that you can upgrade. Yeah, and part yeah, of that, that, and 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 my my problem with that is that it's 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 just EA EAFying, it's it's FIFAifying Star Citizen. Yeah, mm. you want to get the new the the new the newest skin, the yeah. newest good looking, you know, the one that has the the latest updates. You gotta update it, so you gotta pay that eighty dollars to get the Connie, you know, yearly Connie uh, upgrade. Yeah, it doesn't even make sense. Oh. Now there should be at most there should be the original one that came out, like. Obviously, the constellation is an old ship, right? You yes. could, you could, you could sell an MK2, right? You could say there's a Mark II for it, but you need to keep that old one good, right? Because mm -hmm. people should be looking at it as a as a different ship. It's yeah. got a different style. It came from a different time of RSI. It's unique. There's, it shouldn't just be replaced. Yeah. No, I, I get that, and, and, and the, the, that's that's my fear. I don't want this to happen, but I can see this happening. Don't make it happen, Paul. I'm well, I'm not trying to will this into existence. I'm trying to I, warn people. I'm trying this isn't this isn't told this me is, people like you. You change <laughs> I'm uh I, I there is that that also that that uh what's the old meme about the sci-fi writer who's like the torment and finally people will no know not to invent the torment nexus. Um, <laughs> in my book, the, do not invent the torment nexus. The torment nexus. <laughs> and, like and, a, there's a tweet that's like, we've invented the torment nexus. From from the book, do not invent the torment nexus. You know, um, so I I could yeah. I I could do that, but you know, and and I could also see people doing that because it's a way of CIG collecting new money and giving people an option to upgrade rather than having to stick it stick around, and then they can they can constantly update it over time. But I feel that's very scummy. I feel like that's. Because, uh, you know, those sorts of things probably wouldn't be available for six months in, in game until after the fact, that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, so. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm torn about it myself. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of bad ways modularity can go. So let's uh, let's kind of ramp up this discussion because we have been talking for like. No joke. Uh, 45 minutes on this already. <laughs> uh, time's gone by. Um, let's let's kind of give our overall feel for modularity, like you know, like mm -hmm. our own hopes and dreams, maybe, or maybe are just kind of our own kind of how we're feeling about it. And if we think it's actually going to happen, is CIG actually going to hit modularity in 3.23 uh, X or even this year? Because it's one thing for CIG data to a roadmap, but it's not committed. Mm -hmm. It's still it's still just kind of added. Usually what CIG says mm -hmm. is that it's like when they put it on the roadmap, it's like or in the release view, it's like 50 percent, 50, 60 percent. They think that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and they have a pretty good track record. I think they've only dropped like five or six things from the roadmap since they did this new system. Since, since, they, since the roadmap watchers made everybody upset and they, uh, they had a breakup. Yeah. 
with with the roadmap to make the progress tracker. Mm. And now the progress tracker is is, is chopped liver and now <laughs> starts at a one point zero roadmap. That's the that's that's it. That's, that's the thing. It. That's the thing now. Uh so Space Tomato, what's your overall feeling about it? You know, are you excited? Are you concerned about it? Are you just whelmed by it? And do you think CIG can get it put in? I'm again asking you a sneaky win question. Um <laughs> <laughs> Love those. Those are my favorite. <laughs> yeah, those. That's what I live for. When <laughs> hold me accountable. Um, I, I don't know, mm. man. It, modularity was always something that kind of. Uh, I I I don't come from the idea that I want to build ships. Right. I think a lot of people really love ship customization i think that's an update that just came to no man's sky people are pumped for it it, mm. it is a cool update that's pretty sick uh, but i am not good at building vehicles that look normal <laughs> so, <laughs> i tend to leave that to other people um so like i never thought too much about ship customization i was always kind of thinking more about the fps gameplay experience the engineering the exploration that kind of stuff so modularity was like a background topic for me mm -hmm. i thought I thought they would kind of stick away from it for the reason I was talking about earlier with all the balance and stuff, but I do see the opportunities that they have. Um, and I, that, that's why, what worries me. I think that they can handle modularity. They've got like a really good game engine at this point built around the idea of making spaceships that work in mm -hmm. space. And um, I think that's not a problem for them, but when it does come to how they use that modularity to forward the game or fund the game, it does, I do get a little bit more nervous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vertigo. Oh my God. Like my wish list for modularity. So like, you're excited Carrick. about it? Yeah. Carrick. Carrick's supposed to be, have some modulars. Like I just want to be able to detach the cargo modules off the, off the Carrick and open them up so I can do stuff with them. That's fair. That's really yeah. what I want. Uh, but yeah, I think, I mean, why would CIG like put effort into the tech if they weren't going to monetize it? Right with additional ships that could have modularity. I mean, there's old ships that need it, right? Nodules pop off them, pop moon modules on them. Um, we have the Galaxy coming out. Do I think it's going to happen anytime soon? Besides the re Retaliator? Eh. You know, the, 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 the pace of development for, is for Star Citizen is glacial. Like, it took us until today to really see any the Neil move on modularity, right? Mm-hmm. You know, other than Galaxy was the last time it really got pushed. The community has always asked about it, but CIG's been, again, it's like Space Mino said, it's always been this thing in the background, and the community has always kind of wanted to know, and they've always theorycrafted. The ever, community loves theorycrafting about stuff. Oh, we, yeah. love, we love talking about the game. We want to have a game and do you know, more stuff in the I mean, game. That's and, basically what this episode is. It's just theorycrafting, but you know. yeah. Um,. So, like I said, like the retaliator is going to be great. Like, obviously, um, a lot of people are going to be disappointed because many people years ago were really excited that hey, you buy the retaliator base and you get a torpedo bomber. Remember when the retaliator first came out? Everybody yeah. was like, "Look at this, one hundred fifty dollars! You get like six torpedoes. That's great." Oh, mm -hmm. And what's you don't have to worry about it until CIG actually. Like, that was a long time ago. Oh yeah, I'm trying to remember when the retaliator first released. That was back in what two thousand fourteen. Yeah. I want to say 15. So yeah. So now now people who, who bought the retaliator all those years ago are gonna log in and then it's just gonna be like an empty retaliator. It's gonna be the cargo modules instead of yep. the torpedoes, and then they're gonna go they're, well, they're no, not even cargo their... modules, it's just gonna be empty. Well it should I, I think it's I think the CIG is gonna swap it over so you can't have an empty ship. Like they well, talked the... about was the, they talked about this with the galaxy. The galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Well you can't have an can't... empty, it's just there's nothing you can't there's nothing in there. It's just gonna have a doors yeah. that are closed, but you won't have anything in there. So. Maybe they'll do that with a retaliator. Just have doors that are just welded shut, and there's just an empty box mm -hmm. you can't look at. Uh, but I figured it'd be like the cargo module, the retaliator base. Uh, but yeah, that's always a possibility. You just you just have welded shut doors. You can't do anything with the ship. And then people are going to walk into their hangars and they see their their not non functioning retaliator. seven crew retaliator that just has turrets on it, and they're like, "What am I supposed to do with this thing?" And then they're going to spill their spaghetti and be upsetty. <laughs> <laughs> About it, especially because... the people who've been away for eight years. Yes, oh, yeah. people have been away. But honestly, who flies the Retaliator anymore? There's like, you know, the Polaris is going to release, and everybody's going to cross chassis upgrade to that thing, right? 
Yeah. Hey, I mean, everybody's flying Polaris around you. Maybe you want to be in a retaliator. Or Perseus. <laughs> or Perseus, yeah. All right. Uh, Axis, same question to you. Your overall feelings, and do you think they can make it in this year? Well, as a mutual owner of a tally base myself, I'm actually looking forward to trying out these modularity and hopefully being a terrible guinea pig for any mishaps in the PU when it happens. But at the same time, I think we need to limit expectations. The two ships, well, three if you count the variant, I think we're going to get the modules that they are intending, whether announced or not, and just the two ships, you know, the MPUV stock vehicle and the Retaliator. I wouldn't expect the Galaxy until after the Polaris. So I'm kind of limiting expectations on anything beyond what they've announced, you know? Mm -hmm. Nothing out the door, you know, if they get it in, great. If not, and they say, oh, we need a little more time on the oven, I'm okay with that because I don't want, say, a module to fall off in the middle of quantum yeah. with somebody in it. All right. Just um, I, I do think they're going to make it in because they, they, uh -huh. they, they've had a really good track record of this. Um, and overall, I'm feeling optimistic but cautiously so uh because I, I think i'm just jaded i just i it's been so long since they mentioned modularity it's like mm. I, like like space tomato is probably the the youngest and freshest of us in terms of being part of star citizens community and even it's probably it's probably even older for you right it's been you've it's been on the the horizon for you for for since you've backed yeah. the game or since you've been yeah. content creation so uh and it's, 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 uh, back when CIG announced uh, or modular, modularity, I had brown hair. <laughs> mm -hmm. This showed you how I long had, ago that's I been. have, I have more gray hair. Yeah. Now, <laughs> since I, since I've pledged for Chris Roberts's waiting, waiting room simulator. So I didn't so, have facial hair. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that's kind of like the, the the kind of the weird position like I feel in like I I feel excited for the future and where it's going, but at the same time I'm also kind of like we've been down this road before. I don't I don't know, I don't know. But I think that's that's our discussion. Um, I do think that it is it has the possibility of being the biggest game changer for Star Citizen in terms of how ships are developed out of anything that we've seen thus far, because it just offers so many options for changes to how things work. The Caterpillar alone is a, is a, is a loot box of fun. Um, Cause you can go crazy with that thing. You want to, you want a broadside Caterpillar? You can do it. You want a, a, a you know, a, a Kraken pillar, you know, a, a secret, mm -hmm. a secret capital ship you can, or a or carrier, you can do that. You want a Starfarer version of a Caterpillar, a salvage repair, even like a construction version. Because of the nature of its already modular ship, you can CIG can go nuts with it. And the one thing that CIG loves is any idea that that the rule of cool is the winner, and that's mm -hmm. that's the caterpillar right there. So I think it has the biggest option. And on top of that, they could sell the uh, the little command module as its own individual ship. <laughs> God, so little wart. There's a yeah. little bit more money. It's 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 yeah. it's the uh, it's the Pisces all over again. See, I just like ooh, we can triple our investment with just one change. So Qu quadruple dipping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there was one more thing. Um, yeah. The utility mounts. Do you think that might advance oh, yeah. because of modularity? Because they they've kind of like haven't talked about it at all. Even though we now have mining lasers, salvage salvage lasers and tractor beams, which should all be able to go on the same thing. And I think they can on like the Vulture and stuff, but they've talked about that in terms of like the Terrapin and the Nomad and anything else that has a mount. Do you think that's something that might, we might see movement on this year? Hmm. I think, I think so. I think they'll either, well, either they'll either be dead forever or they'll, they'll, mo they'll mold into the modularity conversation. I think that's how it works. What do you think? Access? I want to put a mining laser on my Terrapin. <laughs> I don't think I, we're ever to go there where we have I, like ships changing like I, I do I think I, I, I believe that CIG will let us mine in any ship we want to at some point they'll come up with some way of replacing weapons with mining lasers 
at some ridiculous cost. Because again, rule of cool. Um, Axis, what do you what do you think they're going to do with the utility mount? Um, could do anything. I mean, you think it's still going to be a thing? It might be, or maybe incorporated into modularity, like you guys are saying. I mean, we don't Pretty know. Cool. There's a lot we don't know about yeah. this version of modularity. I mean, we're also forgetting this whole discussion. One ship that is getting modularity that's part of squadron 42 mm -hmm. and that's the javelin mm -hmm. all right the javelin is the largest player owned ship and a lot of people are like well it also requires big service true but for its functionality it also requires modularity mm -hmm. and oh my lord yeah. really the javelin has more? modules yep i don't remember they never sold them but it's the whole ship is supposed to be swapped out for things like Command and control, uh, mm. orbital bombardment, rate ship rating, uh, like like oh, it's geez. got, yeah, it got it even has a VIP module. Oh and really? So, yeah. I wonder if it has like the uh, Star Wars Imperials have like a deployable base, you know, where you just drop it off. Oh yeah, but you're not you're not landing anything. You're not landing. You only land once with the javelin. No, um, I mean it parks above a surface, drops the drops base. Uh, um, Vertigo, what do you think? Do you think what do you think is going to go on with the utility map? We'll kind of wrap, wrap it up with that. And then move on I mean, like, answers. we're we're probably gonna see like a lot of obviously a lot of tractor beam stuff with the utility mounts on the Cutlass Black, the mm. 300 315 P. Uh, we'll probably see more utility mounts get added to ships, so you're gonna have okay. like external tractor beams and whatnot. But I'm trying to think what you could possibly add besides tractor beams to utility mounts for increased actually... flexibility scanners. Maybe. Yeah, I actually just double checked because I remembered them saying something about it on the Terrapin thing. And they do talk here about a um like putting some kind of a communication control and command equipment on the Terrapin for like an AWACS position. So I mean they're they're <laughs> that's you know, that's a Terrapin Q and A from two thousand fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> but like they might have I'm looking at the javelin one right now because it's been so long since I've read up on the javelin. I'm like, yeah, it's supposed to have modulars, modules. Yeah. According to this write up. Sorry, you should have brought that up earlier. Sorry, guys. It's fine. I, I forgot about it myself. It's it's like like the, the it. I think it kind of that all that goes to point that CIG has always thought about modules in some way, but I don't think we've ever had a definitive answer as to how much or how little CIG wants to go with modules. Um, and I think that's that's becomes the kind of a major flaw in CIG's design. So. Uh, all right. I think we're going to pause here and then we'll be we'll moving on into question and answer sessions. So thank you for watching thus far and listening. If you're listening to this on the podcast, if you've enjoyed this thus far, please hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this and hit the bell icon to be notified when these release. Of course, follow, or, you know, do the subscribe. Is there a subscribe button on you on the audio format? I don't know how that works. It's follow, I guess. I think on Spotify. Yeah, you can, yeah. you can subscribe to Spotify or follow. And, uh, Oh, let's see. Rate, rate it, obviously, on, on the podcast version. And if you enjoy any of this, catch us live at twitch.tv slash theastropub, youtube.com, the Astropub live uh, at our new time, which is now at Saturdays at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, and at like 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. Uh, GMT or like 10 a.m., 10, 10 p.m. GMT. I can't remember exactly what time it is. That would 7 p.m. 7 p.m. GMT. UTC. I don't UTC. know what GMT is. Yes. GMT is UTC, the same thing. It just, you know. They uh, switch at daylight or something. I, yeah, it's there's some some difference to it. It's just it's not specifically England rules the waves sort of the situation. Uh, so, yeah, please check us out then. And, uh, yeah, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh.
it. All right, <laughs> welcome back, y'all. We're gonna do the question and answer session with Space Tomato, HC Virgo, and Axis 0096. Make sure All you right. check them out on YouTube, Twitch, and their other platforms. Uh, give them some love. And with that, we're gonna take questions from the audience. Um, mm -hmm. We have 14 questions thus far, and uh, we try to keep this within an hour, an hour and a half, to respect the time of the folks who are here. So, with that all being said, let's start off with the first one from Lady Space Patrol, who asks, for those of us who bought the Retaliator base, how will the absence of a module be handled? Will it be open to space like part of the hammerhead? Will it be closed off with an empty glass shell? Will it be a solid metal piece, a metal, piece of solid metal space, as if no module will ever exist there? Will it will it be living quarters for the multi crew who uh, who otherwise have to nowhere else to go except their tiny bunk or the bathroom? Um, we I talked about it on the last last section. Yeah, where it's just gonna be the doors are gonna be welded off. It's just gonna be a blank like solid I, material. I think in this section. I don't I actually don't think that. it's I don't think it's gonna be the uh, be welded off. I think it's gonna be like the galaxy where yeah. there's going to be doors for, like, the Bombay doors. Like, they'll be there, but they'll just be nothing in there. So you could walk in, and you will walk directly onto the doors. So, like, an empty room, basically? Yeah, yeah. basically like an empty room. Because that's what the galaxy yeah. is. The galaxy said that there will be some sort of doors at the very bottom. Uh, so you could still technically use it to call, haul cargo, but there's no, like, latching space, so the cargo is just going to bounce around inside there. There's no secure, secureness. Oh, there. that'd so. be interesting. I think I think I if they just they, leave a blank. If they're doing it for for the if already doing that for the the galaxy, I imagine that's just the standard they're going to go where where it's just there are going to be doors that you can walk on, but nothing else there, just big empty yeah. room. Uh, which ironically, I think will be very popular with like content creation because you basically give have given the the content creators a empty um, studio space, especially with the galaxy, where they mm -hmm. can key out the background. <laughs> as long as they don't have the right color, <laughs> the same color, they can key out the background. Oh, so, yeah. uh, all right. So the galaxy just became the studio ship. I think so. Um, Camera studio in. <laughs> it won't have textures. It, it might have some textures, but it's going to be very basic. Like it'll be like the bulkhead textures. Mm -hmm. So, um. But we don't know, honestly. Like that's that's the the that's based off of what they said with the galaxy. But yeah, like it could be anything. It could be just like like Tomato said. It could be it could be like the the hammerhead, where it's just empty. It's just a big open space, exposed to space. So, retaliator head. All right. Um, Doc Platypus asks: At which phase of ship modularity do you see the Carrick getting a pass to fix the cargo pods? I'll start with you, Vertigo, since I know this is your passion project. Oh my god. Uh the Carrick getting like its modularity. Man, I'd I'd want it as soon as possible, you know, this year. Mm -hmm. Um the problem with the Carrick is like you can't access the cargo at all. Yeah. Like if the you get this like if the Carrick shows up as like an HRT bounty or a VHRT or a ERT bounty, mm -hmm. like and you destroy it, you want to like loot the Carrick, you can't. Yeah. If there's if there's a, if it you need to have like the one by one SCU boxes or the one by two SU boxes to get, like, but you have to like track to beam it up into the, the catwalks and you have to walk it through the doors all the way out to the front of the carrot. It's, it's a nightmare. Um, so I'm hoping CIG will do it, but like, there's no word from CIG. If the carrot's even been looked at, mm -hmm. um, obviously like squadron 42 is taking precedent. And of course, CIG has to continue to sell ships to keep the company afloat. And, you know, so it's not they're not very incentivized to go back and work on older ships uh if they have to, if they don't have to if they have a reason to go back and touch up old ships because you know squad 42 needs the retaliator so let's put modularity to the retaliator because that makes sense because we're going to do gold pass on the retaliator so let's do modularity on the retaliator let's finally get that stuff out of the way but i don't see this i don't think i don't think the Carrick is going to jump to the top of the list after the retaliator Okay. Like I'm, I'm very. I have to talk about how confident, and I'm not very confident of the Carrick getting modularity anytime soon within the next year. Yeah. With the next two years, maybe with the next three years, I'm pretty confident. Next three years, we'll see more modularity getting done for like the entirety of of Star Citizen ships. Yeah. I. I uh, this is a secret when question from Doc Platypus. Is what this is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when is it getting <laughs> in there? Two years. Um, Always the default years. answer. Like two yeah, years. two years from now. 
definitely Axis. two years, of course. Yeah. Axis, when do you think we're going to get him? I'm I'm in agreement with Vertigo here because mm -hmm. the Carrick and some other people have mentioned it too in comments. It's hard to get down into those cargo bays in the first place, and they don't even look segmented right now from the frame of the ship. So they're going to have to rework the Carrick as it is to make those separate cargo modules in the first place. And if the retaliators being worked on, maybe there's limits to what they're working with right now, a small and a medium scale of modularity, maybe. Maybe they haven't gotten to large or extra large yet because the galaxy would be considered a large ship, right? Mm -hmm. And the Carrick's in XL or semi-capital, you know, Corvette. So there might be size constraints to the modularity. We're not, like you guys have been saying in the last two questions, there's a lot we don't know about this iteration of modularity. So I'm curious where we're going to go with this. I'd say at least two years. Before that, we might get other things related to Squadron 42 that are modular, but Paul knows what I'm referring to. Mm. Yeah, but that's Jeff. a big maybe. Um, so there's another question kind of that uh, that's added on to this, but I'll, I'll kind of address it, which is like, how about all the other features that the Carrick's going to get, like the drones, the scanning, the crafting, mm. the fabrication, all that yeah. stuff. Is that going to be like, is this, is this all going to come in one drop? Do you think, or do you think they'll 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 fix one thing and then another and another? Because uh, I think it's gonna be one thing and another, another, another. Yeah, I I I don't think so. I think it'll be one drop. I think mm -hmm. I think like the caterpillar and like a lot of the other ships that need a lot of work, they'll wait until everything is ready to go and then they'll go. We're gonna sit here and work on the entirety of the Carrick and get that done because it's one of those mm, popular ships. I can see that. I think and, that's why we've stopped seeing gold standards. Yeah, I think they around. <laughs> They were like doing the gold standards, and then at some point they were just like, you know what, let's do the squadron ones because the rest of these, they're just gonna have to gold standard them every two years. They got to do maelstrom, <laughs> they got to implement yeah. engineering, they've got to do drones, modularity. There's like big ship defining systems that'll require reworks of these ships. So I think yeah. that's kind of what they're like waiting for the tech to be ready for a lot of this stuff. So you got to ask yourself, when's the carrot gonna get a gold standard pass? That's probably when we're gonna see modularity. That's when's, when's the when's the F seven Mark II gonna get a gold standard pass? They're not <laughs> going to. They're gonna get complete passes. This is why we've seen an end to gold standard because CIG wants us to get fully complete functioning ships. I think one of the first we've gotten is the Vulture, and they even did a minor rework on the Vulture to make it even more accessible to people who use the Vulture, which is surprising, but. CIG throws curveballs too. Sorry to and get the Vulture will need, a, need another gold pass too. It yeah. does, but it's well, still more complete than the Reclaimer. If you look at the Retaliator, for instance, it's getting its gold pass uh, with 3.23.x, but that's only because it's getting modularity. Like it, it yeah. feels like the reason why it got its gold pass is because it's done. Once it's got its modularity, yeah. it's finished. Uh, and they all, obviously they did the interior rework and stuff like that, and they're never they they can't keep going Maelstrom. back and doing this over time. Probably Maelstrom as well. Uh, like I, I maybe that's not required though for the gold pass. I have a feeling that Maelstrom is more of a procedural thing rather than a bespoke yeah. thing, where it's like they they can break a ship into parts by a an algorithm or some sort of system they've, they've developed, so it's not as uh, like oh I have to manually cut out a piece here and there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um. But that's another question in and of itself. Uh, all right. So the next question comes from. I'm going to pause redemption questions real, real quick because there's now 17. <laughs> As I said, it would go pretty high. Uh, when the release of modularity, do you think CIG will drop an un, un, unannounced ship that highly features modularity as its flagship? I don't think so. Hmm. Because we have that, that, that was already released. It's called the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Like they did that earlier. That was the, because CIG doesn't, CIG doesn't like saying new feature is released. Here's a brand new ship that, that we have came up from the ground up with this feature. It's more of a, we want to sell you this ship because this feature is coming up in the next six months. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Spirit E1. Yeah. 
you know, the the A one, the the, mm-hmm. the 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 C one. All of those were like they were they, they were gonna get tractor beams because it's gonna sound weird. It already does sound weird that that the tractor beams were very recent in the last year that we got yes. tractor beams. Yes, yes. And it was the it was the spirit C one that brought yeah. the tractor beams and they came to the cutlass. Yeah. And the Cutlass got a rear tractor beam you can access from the co-pilot seat that I always forget every time I climb into a Cutlass. I walk yeah, back yeah. and I'll, I'm like, oh, that's new. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. But it, feel, it feels like we've had tractor beams and like the tractor gun for so long that it mm-hmm. kind of feels like it's always been there. It, it feels yeah. like, I, I guess it's a testament to CIG's development skills that they, like it always feels like it's part of the game. Well, the problem is you don't game. need vehicle mounted tractor beams for anything. The handheld yeah. tractor beams serve you. You could pick up a 32 can, 32 SU can, of mm. gold with a handheld tractor beam the one the the, the little pistol tractor beam fine now you just you can swing that stuff around in space you can go down on a planet blow up a reclaimer it'll drop like a 32 can of gold you can pick that up slap that into your carrot and fly off no problem <laughs> when you can't slap that 32 then... SU box in your carrot yeah yeah well you could slap it into the <laughs> hangar or something you have it stick it out like a cigar uh, usually I use like the Corsair for that kind of stuff I'm doing like uh, ERT bounties picking up like gasping weevil eggs Mm-hmm. But occasionally you'll find like a 32 can of like medical supplies. It's, nah, that's decent money. That's like 50,000 credits, one of those. Yeah. But yeah, you can slap that into your, you can slap three 32 cans in the back of a Corsair and it all that barely fits. You can't use the cargo bay for, for anything else anymore, but yeah, you can and have a whole bunch of stuff back there. I do agree. People are going to hate when that changes. Yeah. When, when, when you, when you have to use vehicle tractor beams to move those things, yeah. cause it's going so to have to call, you're, you're going to have to call up someone with an Argo to like help pick up some gold that you dropped out of like a reclaimer or something. You, you, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to drop on this grenade and, and I mostly because, you know, I, I want to hear the screeching in the, in the, uh, the comments mm-hmm. about people talking about how they're going to unsubscribe from me for this, this hot take. Cause it's going to, it's, it's a spicy hot take. Uh, I, I, I'll be I, the judge of that, Paul. I live for the day when Star Citizen is developed enough to the point where people lose their fucking minds because something has changed. Like, to the point where, like, like, like oh, the functionality that was always supposed to be added to the game is in, and now people are just mad. Just just absolutely screeching mad that they, uh, that, like, like this is added in. Like, what do you mean yeah, I have here. to load everything by hand? What do you mean I have to have that's, to that's have to have be sub- the next patch? Oh. What are you get? Like what you... cargo elevators, it's it's gonna change how cargo running's done. It's gonna change how like you get ready. Yes, yeah, so, somebody to play the ex... game. Like you're somebody gonna lose access mean. to that infinite void of yeah. backpack <laughs> energy that has all your bullshit in it. You can just fart no, out like what... a suit of armor. You the, have to the, walk the... up to a terminal to actually have the armor dispensed at you. Yeah, they're saying it's gonna ruin the game. Yeah, I'm like that's what they've been working. They've been doing this. They stopped allowing us to take our stuff. Like somebody. Yeah, I knew that was like, coming. I've mean? played. Chris Roberts games in the past. I know how this man works. I've played yeah. Minecraft. I know you have to go, you have to put a treasure chest down in the world, and then you have to put items in that treasure chest, and then when you want those items in your character's inventory, you have to go find the treasure chest that that item is in to yeah. add it to your inventory. Like, you can't just... a surprise? He's right. Magic bag of holding. <laughs> because 315, people... they changed it. They changed it so we couldn't access space stations. And people are like, what do you mean I have to go to physical locations? You, we already have to. But but I mean, <laughs> on top of that, you're going to have, when you actually require another human being in another ship mm-hmm. to unload your ship physically, people oh, yeah, will lose different. their mind. I mean, they uh, have, yeah, like, yeah. they're going to do timers for the next patch. Like, you're when... going to have to store your ship and oh, then... Yeah unload it into the hangar and then go to go to sell the stuff and that t- there's gonna be a timer and it was like it was like nine minutes to unload a carrick well and, and, so and, but we already have know. to have like a huh We're, but i was gonna say we already knew that this was going to happen because yeah, we knew this like a lot of the people who have been here since the beginning we knew about this stuff but star the problem is with star citizen and this is the the, the opposite <laughs> side of that hot take the defense of the fan base oh, is yeah. a lot of people have bought in recently and mm-hmm. they don't know a lot about Chris Roberts or what his holistic. There's, it's like try to get a glass of water, like, like this teacup. It's like try to fill this teacup, like for at Niagara Falls. Like yeah. you, you take this. There's so much information with Star Citizen on the internet. It's like you, you take your teacup, you shove it into Niagara Falls, you pull your hand back out, and the teacup's gone. All you have is just is just the handle left. Yeah. Like there's just so much bullshit out there on Star Citizen that changes constantly. It's just like what is even like the. That's even if you care to look. Right. Mm-hmm. Other than like you have the very surface level, like I watched like uh, Paul Shelley or Space Tomato Gaming or HC Vertigo play or Axis 
play Star Citizen. Wow, this looks really cool. You go from planet to surface and to space and pew pew lasers, and I'm gonna buy buy a starter pack. And then the next patch you load in, you have like to wait nine minutes to unload the ship you bought for like two hundred dollars. And it's just like, where the hell did this come from? Like I remember the last patch I played, it was like instantaneous. When yeah. did they change this? And like everybody just tells you, we we saw this coming from year years ago. <laughs> Well, that's I, a very I, frustrating experience, Paul. I can I, see I, where the outrage I get, comes from. I get that. I get that. But also, in mm-hmm. all, in, in counter to that, d- why did you buy a game? Why do you spend two hundred dollars in a game you did no research on? Why do you have to, to do research? Because you got to research game. everything. That costs you have to, you why would research. you have, do that? You have to research I, every I, game. I. Oh it's, my God! People uh, go to work to work right and then they yeah. come home for play why is our play really difficult why do i have to work to play paul hmm? because because, hmm? because the people are going to be frustrated that's the whole point yeah well, like, you're not well, frustrated well, by it's like surprise. it's like why, why like shouldn't the game be fun why is it work work and game <laughs> fun paul it's 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 that's like expecting to know how to play baseball because you saw it once on television and you, you went and bought a baseball. You can't. You're just not going to be very good at it, but you can go out there and you can run around around the diamond. What do you, you, what do you mean? I have to stand yeah, up and, at the baseball and I have to hit the hit, hit, the, hit the baseball or steal bases <laughs> or what do you mean? I have to sit in the left field and catch balls like like Let's people see. need to know how to fucking play the game and in research their own goddamn game. That's one of the one of the basics of like. The system we exist in. Or you can just in. play Calvin Ball and just have fun. Just make the rules as you go. <laughs> or sometimes it's just the fun thing about being on the podcast is just being with you, Paul. Who yeah. cares uh, about the rules? That's true. Uh, thank it's you. Like, but it's like with it's like that with anything. Like, I hate to bring it up as an example, but a lot of people think thought Starfield was going to be their the game that they really wanted, and it was like no research at first. Figure yeah. out if it is. Same with No Man's Sky. Same mm-hmm. with all of them. Like. I, yeah, these days, I, 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 I recommend that people don't go bother reading like game journalists yeah. or Reddit posts. I recommend going watch a streamer you like, find a personality that you like, that you, that you vibe with, right? And watch them play your favorite game or watch them play a new release. And just watch the first hour of the release and ask yourself, does that look like I'm going to have fun with that? Yeah. Right? Because some, some personalities, they can make anything look fun, right? They yeah. get, they get, they're just like they're, 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 their personalities are very magnetic. But if you could watch like a let's play or something with like no microphone or anything like that, and you can just watch someone like play the first hour of a game. If you go like, yeah, that looks like something I could enjoy. That's a better review of a game these days than anything that's put out like by modern gaming journalism. There's your research. Yeah, yeah. But, that's, well, that's, but, but that's what I mean. But the problem is like Star Citizen sometimes changes. So like Adventure One put out a video on Master Mode, and I agree with him. Yeah. Right. Because what I what he was talking about with Master Mode, even though I kind of ripped him a new one over that video, Ooh. but what I heard him talk about Master Mode was the same stuff I was hearing when when three point zero were released. Two point six three was more fun, right? People were saying that shit all the time. That how they preferred the previous oh, flight yeah. model to the new flight model. Yeah, and we're many... gonna have the same thing every yeah. time CIG changes something. Everyone was like, "Well, we were we got used to this last flight model. It was better, or we used this last system. It was better." Yeah, but it's hard uh, to do research on this shit, though. It's, it's, at the end of the day, though, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Paul. I was going to say, like the, the 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 point being, though, is that like there, there's there's no video game out there you don't do some research into, you don't look into, and even playing like like playing with a uh, or like watching a streamer play a game, you know, with Star Citizen, you're gonna osmosis gather a lot of information. Yeah about the game that will also understand that yeah things change dramatically especially since like a lot of the stuff that comes out from star citizen is the game's about to change or like this this new feature is coming in war. it's going to change everything war never and, changes yes except yeah. for star citizen star citizen always, always changes, changes. <laughs> metal Sorry, gear solid Sp- four i love that game space metal what are you, what are you- <laughs> metal gear solid four that's not a quote from that that's of course that was intentional right yes that's, yeah you say the wrong game <laughs> Um, but yeah, like and that's I have to defend the community on this one, Paul. Like I, uh-huh. I, I know your take take is hot, but I have to side with it with with some of the newer backers here on this one. Where you played Star Citizen up to this point, like you bought like two years ago, maybe you did your research a little bit. Like you looked at your back, you watched some videos on it. You watched Space Tomato Gaming, and you watched Paul Shelley's a couple of Paul Shelley's videos. Like there's so much stuff that's into the weeds, like little details, like physically physical cargo. And whatnot that can change the game dramatically and how it, how it impacts you preparing to play the game and how how death of a spaceman how how like having just 
you know, full loot PvP being a thing in Star Citizen, like you drop your loadout. Like they sprung that us on us out of out of out of nowhere, right? One day where it's just like, oh hey, by the way, when you die, you drop your subscriber gear where you die and mm -hmm. you know, someone else can leave your subscriber gear. That was a huge upset. Because that came out of nowhere. How are you supposed to do research on that, Paul? I mean, this is information Space that comes tomato? out all the time. Like <laughs> The, the Come thing, to my YouTube channel. Yeah, <laughs> watch his YouTube channel. Watch, watch, because the problem is, is when it comes down to it, is that Star Citizen is an alpha, and mm -hmm. as you know, there are seven thousand different little screens that you have to get to to be, mm -hmm. where CIG says in detail things are going to change. We're going to change it. Every yeah. piece of CIG media has some some form. It's Jared saying, "Listen, we're going to change." It's 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 one of those things where they explain often that things are going to change and and yeah. i understand i understand what you're i understand what you're getting at which is i pay game i monkey see game see game monkey play see game. game fun play game <laughs> game fun now 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 yeah. change monkey mad right. because game monkey change monkey um, yes and yeah. this happens to every game right but it yeah, does. But it like Battlefield, Battlefield 2042. They had the yeah. uh, the specialist system. Everybody was mad because it was different from the other battlefields. They yeah. wanted the the medic class, the engineer class, the assault class, this recon class. And when they had the the you know the Apex Legend heroes, where every hero yeah. has its own special power, everyone was mad about that. Monkey upset because different. And I was like, I was getting used to it. Like I was like, hey, this is all right. I can but, get used to this. But but I, I also think that that that's also a uh, that's also a staple of of, of not, not only just a staple of games, but it's something that like if you bother engaging with the community at all, you pick that up pretty quickly. So I don't have much sympathy for somebody who picked the game up, you know, I do two years ago. And says, uh, suddenly I'm going to have to load my, my, my stuff by hand and then loses their mind when mm -hmm. every, if you looked at any kind of like, like overview of how cargo is going to work or cargo, car, cargo stuff is, is, is functioning manual. I'm not loading, necessarily, loading, talking, about, I'm not necessarily like talking about people who are like interested in like the cargo gameplay. I'm talking about like hangers with physical cargo. It's going to, it's going to touch on everybody's gameplay. True. Right. Even if you are just into PvP, you just want to load in and shoot your shoot your gladiator missiles at stuff. Like, but that's not you're gonna you're probably like, got to physically do your like your 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 components at some point in the future. Or when you do your loadout, there's gonna be a timer to change your loadout too. I would this, imagine. Is, this is this is also why I said it was a hot take because I knew that people were gonna get mad at me. Oh, for there's gonna that. be some. <laughs> I I have a hot take, the opposite side of your hot take. How CIG literally tells us every time that they you can't you can't take them at their word. How they're they're perfect they're basically just lying to our faces faces the entire time because Jared says the one thing you can expect from development is change, right? But there there are constants here, man. Like the there are there it's like CIG, yeah. You Jared Huckabee see. tells us that the one thing you can expect is change from development. This is which if, means nothing if, they say, nothing they write down is worth anything. If there was a game that I would expect there to be full loot and also physical, like I it doesn't it makes sense to me that both those things occur in the same game. Mm -hmm. If you're paying attention and you see that there is an injury system, you would assume that there's going to be a lot of shit that comes with getting injured or getting shot. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I, there's going to be consequences. I feel like it's an easy, if, if it, you, it's easy to learn it as you just start to watch videos on it. If right. And if, you, and if you paid attention, Chris Roberts said years ago, you were going to wake up next to your bed with all your stuff in a trunk next to you. Right. Yeah. I still, I still expect something like that. The item bank that's in your apartment, whatever you go over there, you press a button, yeah. it puts everything that you have right on your body. Like I, I still think that kind of stuff's gonna happen. So I mean, so there you go. There's there's the question that broke the podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was more me being me being uh, yeah. uh be, be, being uh, I can't an remember insightful... what the question was honestly. Oh, I just it, remember Paul's like, I got a hot take. I, I was gonna say the hot take. It was it was about um because we we were talking about um. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I want to say it was like about modulated because basically my my hot take was I'm not gonna get mad. I, I'm I'm gonna be uh kind of I'm glad kind that of, people are gonna be upset about yeah, changes to the game. about cha changes to the like game because I'm I'm going to suck uh, s s kind of like like susten sustain me the the the, yeah. the, the big mad uh, the energy I, vampire that the, Paul Shelley is except yes. instead of energy absorbing energy it's like Schadenfreude yes I pronounce that word yeah Schadenfreude right. Schadenfreude yeah. Schadenfreude vampire yeah. Um, I, I, I mostly, I mostly say that because I know people are going to get mad in the comments and there's going to be lots of, lots of people who listen, who, who are like, I'm unsubscribing from you, Paul, because you've changed. You're, you're, you're a dick. You're such an arrogant asshole. I fucking hate you. 
Um, Paul. All, all every things time been... I'm on the podcast, I can't help but get over my hate boner. Uh, <laughs> it's so yeah. funny to get, <laughs> you have like a negative take and be told you're too negative, and then like the next day have a positive take and be told you're too positive. You're, you're, I'm, you're, I'm a fucking a unit. I'm a fucking white knight, I, I, and I am I am both white knight and the biggest star citizen hater at the yeah. same time. I am I am shorting your citizen. Um, I just, I, I just don't care. I just try to have the biddest takes I can possibly have. And people still insult me. It's just like whatever. I, if, if, if game is fun, game is fun. That's game where I fun. go for. It. Like people complain about the flight model constantly changing. I'm just like whatever. Just make it goddamn fun. It's been like, dude, yeah. that's where that's it's what been I'm eleven here years. For. It's just, it's been eleven fun, years. Man. If it's fun to play, who gives a shit, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, and I think I think I think that's where most of us are are mm -hmm. kind of coming from. That's where from. a lot of us older backers are. Is it's like just make it just, fun. I just I just want to have fun. This is yeah. I just I want I want to be able to, to hang out with friends and that kind of stuff. So, uh, all right, let's move on. So we now solve sixteen questions. We'll move this. <laughs> we'll, we'll move a little faster for this one what? because yeah, <laughs> we've only. Up? No, you have, have you been on a podcast with me before? I can take <laughs> a fifteen minute video and turn it into a two hour reaction video. Like um, I swear to God, my ADHD will take this this podcast in weird directions. <laughs> so it's just five times the length. <laughs> hopefully, most of these are, are are pretty pretty easy to tackle because there's a couple of them. Like this next one's pretty easy. With larger modules needing to be switched out at specific locations, i.e., cousin crows, mm -hmm. do you see CIG adding those locations to all landing zones, or are you gonna have to go no. to one one location? I could see CIG adding those specific locations to very specific uh, star bases. That mm -hmm. way, if you royally mess up your reputation, you may get locked out of easy access to ship modularity. I, I like can you, see. Now, now you have to go the long way around Terra yeah. to get to Seoul, where, yeah. where, where your reputation isn't dog shit. And then you have to hire someone else to haul all your modules out of Terra I, into to Seoul. I think it's going to be landing zones. It's, it's mm -hmm. Chris Roberts. Chris Roberts made a landing zone. And he's going to make you go to the fucking landing zone and make you walk through the goddamn city so so that you because well, you so enjoy the goddamn city that he, he and his team made so you can change your stuff out. Because that's keep always in mind, the case. Like when, Paul sell, when Paul says landing zones, we're a little spoiled right now with Stanton. Stanton yeah. has like every every Four. planet on yeah. Stanton has basically a major landing zone. Like you may have one major landing zone per star system eventually. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. And some, some of them have zero. Control those landings. Yeah. Some of them so, have zero. It's more relevant to the commonality of the systems we're going to mm -hmm. get. As Levski is the sole landing zone of Nix. Yeah. For now, like they can always change that in the future. They There'll may be small more. additions, but I don't think we're going to see yeah. major, major. But yeah, Levski is probably going to be the major landing zone for Nix. Yeah. So you're you're not going to be able to like swap out modulars. I would I would imagine you wouldn't be able to swap out modules for like the galaxy or the maybe like the Carrick and the Caterpillar. You could do that out in the field. But yeah, I'm imagining maybe. for ships like. I don't think galaxy. I don't, you're going to have to go so. to a starport, or you're going to have to go to a shipyard of some kind too. And there's going to be a timer. I, I, almost certainly, all of it will be t attached to either major late locations with ships mm -hmm. or landing zones. Because, and and I know I hear this all the time. People get mad because they're like, "Why do I have to get out of my ship, take a tram all the way to the central to a central plaza, mm -hmm. go to a place, and then sell my 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 cargo or buy cargo?" From That's an MMO Central. thing, and, and like, but I just want to be able to buy it and go. And it's like, this isn't Elite Dangerous, y'all. This is this is Star Citizen. Yeah, this this, is... this isn't free. This isn't Freelancer. This isn't Wing Commander Privateer. Yeah, even in Wing Commander Privateer, you had to go to a different screen to sell your cargo. But this is this is just MMO shit, right? Like yeah. walking cool. to a place, physically walking to a place, turning your quest in, selling your items to a vendor. But it, this is just like the idea with the MMO, you have to slow the player base down for the social experience. They're going to trap you in an elevator. They're going to trap you into a tram with another yeah. person and try to encourage you to have a conversation with that person. And maybe you'll find a reason to hate them besides the fact that they're just there and they, their armor, they dress <laughs> like a clown. May, may, are you saying <laughs> AC Vertigo? Or are we talking about people talking to you, Vertigo? <laughs> maybe you should learn more about me before you hate me, right? <laughs> It's side. not just because of the way I dress that means I deserve your hate. I have some really hot takes, okay, Paul? Go ahead, Axis. Sorry. For. Depending on the size of the ship, you may have to take it to dry docks, True. shipyards, depending on what they are, mm -hmm. or even manufacturing. Certain ships for certain specialized fields, they may have to end up going to primary hub landing zones like Seoul. 
Terra or whatever. Uh, Crusader. I can, I can Crusader imagine. Crusader has its own. Crusader has its yeah. own like docks. Shipyard. That's why. That's why I said like, about sh shipyards specifically. Yeah. You're gonna have to go to like a major shipyard, and those will be like yeah, in like controlled space. For Kraken, um, for the Kraken, for example, Boria in Magnus yeah. is the shipyard primarily for the Kraken, and for anything like the Pioneer. I would expect Bremen, which yeah. would be right tough. Where 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 the where the where the companies are themselves. So you do you think that we're gonna see like very specific places where like you wanna swap out that uh that endeavor module, you gotta go go to like uh Saisei, where where they build the uh, likely for the capital. ships. Okay. Well, Probably that's, for the capitals. That's a that that's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that'd be awful. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I think it's going to be major shipyards, not specific shipyards. Yeah. Like, you go to I any shipyard it'll... and just a Kraken loadout. Anyways, you go to Space Email, sorry. Oh, I mean, sorry. Drake uh, years, the Drake lovers are eating good because it's just next door to Stanton. Stanton but everybody yeah. else, you've got to go the long way around, guys. Tomato? I'm not trying to switch systems, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think it'll be landing zones and also certain types of space stations. I think at some point they'll get back to kind of what we had pre 3.0 where all the space stations had specialties and maybe you'll have a space station that doesn't do like the big modules and big things but can do little changes to your ships maybe mm -hmm. um i'm really hoping that they treat it kind of like how something like i mean traditional rpgs treat like specialty shops kind of like mm -hmm. uh like oh god what are they called um ripper docks in cyberpunk yeah. Yeah. Like they would generally have like similar things you could get, but everyone would have their own kind of specialty and you could find them in different places. I think, you know, if they treated it like that, it'd be nice. Yeah, I, I could I could see like Berea being the only place you can get a specific like module for a specific ship um, because it's Drake. You know, that's where we would find it or something like that. So I could I could see that. Uh, and so uh, Doc Platypus at, um, kind of followed up. So you're saying I won't be able to get my 200 person org in my personal hangar and just report the port to park the galaxy to change my modules. I don't think so. I think, I think that is, there's certain limits to the design and it seems like CIG's limits is just like a lot of the stuff that you're going to see changes is going to be magic. <laughs> like behind, do not look behind the curtain, you know, <laughs> ship lowers down and then closes up and then. There's a timer where things are going to change over a certain amount of time. Like you're, I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to hot swap stuff on the fly. So, problem with making everything convincing is you have to basically hide some things completely. Yeah, because it's just, it's just it's too expensive to do otherwise in terms of resources and other things like that. So, um, all right. MP, we'll be very quickly on this. We don't have to elaborate. I'll start with you on this tomato. Uh, MPCD, MPCDN asks, Polaris for Invictus? No. Vertigo. No. I think we'd see more about the Polaris on Star Citizen Live or, like, and whatnot. If, 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 because Invictus is, like, May 20th? Yeah, it's, it's like, like, a, May like two months away. Axis? Maybe, but... Like the other two have said, we would have seen more and they would have advertised it. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, a, a hybrid. It's a no, but a yes. No, you won't get your Polaris. But yes, you might be able to see the exterior of the Polaris at like landed. Because one of the things they've done is they pulled Javelin from uh, from the Pirate Swarm missions. And there's been a lot of removal of Javelin from the game because CIG is reworking the exterior of the Javelin for Squadron right now. Uh, I don't think it's like an extensive rework, but I think it's like a it's like a kind of a going it over once more to make sure it still works because it's a major part of the story. <laughs> um, and uh, they've replaced it with the with the uh, the Bengal. So I think instead of having a Javelin tour this year, they'll probably just have uh, a on display. Uh, Polaris, where you can go and look at it, and ooh, and ah, but you can't go inside of it, kind of thing. I can see that. Yeah, last we heard of it, they weren't even starting to work on damage, lighting, no. any of that kind of stuff. They were still gray box. Um, it's the exteriors heading into Lod Zero as of last yeah. month. 
as of February. Uh, February, uh, yeah. So we'll we'll hear no we'll know more about it in the monthly report this which hasn't come out yet for this month, but. Um, I think it's a yeah. solid no. Yeah. I think uh, I think it would be a miss to release the Polaris without engineering too. So I know they would, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> they might release it close in November, but it'd be a hard, low end like fifty fifty. Because, like you said, it's just now entering the laud zero. So yeah, the interior still needs work, and it's a big yeah. ship. Like they they were speeding through it pretty quickly, and then, mm-hmm. but it's still like gray box. There's a lot of damage work they're gonna have to do with it, and lighting, and there's a lot right. of the, the, the small stuff which takes the longer amount of time to to get done. So, yeah. Yeah. um, <laughs> you can't get inside. It. Star Citizen's challenge accepted. I mean, you could get inside it. It's just going to be gray box. It's just gonna look awful. But they're not. <laughs> so they're not gonna let you into it. The community's uh, main challenge changed from can, what will it fit inside to can you get inside? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Just censor both those phrasing. <laughs> uh, Shimpasa asks, with modules coming, do you think we will get more leisure modules like a hot tub module or party module? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> I don't think CIG will sell those until they actually have those working and they still have no idea how to get those working anywhere else. So. A party like, module. Like what? What luxury ship has they sold since like the four hundred I? Uh, the there are well luxury modules, luxury ships that have modules. Luxury ships in right? general, or luxury ships in general. E one. That's E one. Kind of luxury. luxury. Huh. Yeah, it's more transport. Like the the last one we had was the four hundred I, I think, and that was yeah. and these, that's not even really luxury. That's like exploration. That's higher end yeah. exploration. Yeah. So kind of like, luxury ish, and, and yeah, the links and that kind of stuff. But the links the was already G12. sold beforehand, <laughs> and the G twelve was already sold beforehand. I'm talking about like probably since like the eight ninety CIG has basically just said nope on the luxury stuff because they just they I don't think they have a full idea of what to do with luxury, you know? Because right, the they fe- don't have a casino module. Oh God, no! Oh God, we're not getting into that conversation. Um, we're not going to talk about gambling in oh, games. Boy. That's 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 oh, going to be it. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah. Like a currency that can be bought with yeah. real money too. Yeah. Uh, Midnight Black SC asks: The subplot this month includes a water bottle from the Magnus Board of Tourism. Do you think this is a sign that Magnus is in short, on the short list of upcoming systems, or should I take this uh, take this tinfoil hat off? Oh no, Magnus confirmed twenty five right there. I, I mean, I. I, I uh, CIG has made multiple references to Magnus multiple times in monthly reports. Um, they've re- they've gone through it on the um, the the Galactopedia has had major updates to it. So they and I believe they talked about it after they talked about Nix that they went through Magnus as a as the system. So and I I've, I have heard whispers, but you know whispers are whispers, rumors are lies until they're they're true. Um, that Magnus is on the short list. So. It makes a lot of sense. Magnus makes a lot of sense in the sense that it's just one planet that's good, Perea. It's the capital of, um, it's like the, the headquarters for uh, Drake, which is a big draw for people. So it's another kind of unique atmosphere. And it's it's kind of like, Brea is kind of like uh, Hurston meets uh, Area 18. So it's like it's like it's a little bit of Loreville and a little bit of Area 18. It's it's a kind of an old used up place, you know, lots of like of broken windows. Yeah, maybe a little bit of pyro in there, but it's like sort of lawful. It's 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 lawful, but like unregulated or not as regulated as, say, Stanton. So it's kind of it meets that that gameplay aspect where, yeah, technically you're in legal space, but you're probably going to get jumped, you know. So yeah, I this is having your sidearm. Yeah. No, no, where you Magnus are. is uh, where my work's based out of. That's a that is a prime spot in my opinion. To be it's it's so close to the Banu border. It's so insane, like how close that the is. Banu to like border, and it also its three connections are Stanton, Ellis, and Terra. Yeah, like name three better jump points. It's 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 nuts. Oh, uh, actually, has four jump points, doesn't it? Oh no, no, because the Does Ellis it? is connect. Ellis is connected to Nexus. I thought Magnus was connected to Nexus, but no, it's it's Ellis. Nexus, yeah, Ellis and Magnus. So, yeah, I lo- I, I'm excited to see what they do with Magnus. I do really hope it's in that first list of systems. I think it's pretty likely it's in a good spot for it, but we'll see. Yeah. All right. Um, and the fact that they're doing subflare from Magnus uh, that that 
That either is a an indication of that they're working on Magnus or they're working on a Drake ship because mm-hmm. Magnus right. Drake. Yeah. Or both. Sh- or both. Shimpasta asks an indication of those things. <laughs> Shimpasta asks, when did the concept of modular ships come up and why not stick uh, stick to variants only uh, or modules? CIG fired the first shot. It was it's a like while the, ago. There was like the fundraiser, like the It's the, a stretch fun, goal. Yeah, it's, it's a stretch goal. goal. In fact, yeah. they specifically mentioned the Redeemer in that stretch goal. Yeah. To have all sorts right of great stuff. I okay. got to fix something. Be right back. All right. So, um, yes. I mean, and the same with the Caterpillar, the Javelin we talked about earlier. I mean, unless you want to talk about why we're talking about modularity today. Again, CIG fired the first shot. They brought up modularity in the roadmap. So, I, I, I have an, a theory as to why... CIG wanted a to do a game theory. A game theory. That's trademark now. I can't say that otherwise. Oh just, shit! Sorry, Paul. Yeah, you got demonetized uh, now. A, now, now all of this. Now my house. How are we going to feed all pack. these extra cats that yeah. you own now? <laughs> so the, for those uh, of you who want to help Paul Shelley feed his cats, maybe consider <laughs> supporting him on Patreon or PayPal Patreon. because yeah. yeah. Links down below. Um, Links down below. So the the concept I think was is that CIG was doing a ton of variants, and they 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 thought if we can get the the modularization system working, we could not have to work on variants at all. We can start working on on modules, which will be easier for us to make because we can just build out a frame and then replace the inside with the new module. And then they started it's working about lining all the doors up, right? Yeah, that's, that, that's basically was the idea. Is this like yeah. all you have to do is get the doors to line up, and then you just swap modules out all day so it's a lot a lot faster because you can just use you can reuse the exterior yeah you can reuse the asset yeah and and uh, uh then they actually tried to do it and they're like oh oh god this is basic this is <laughs> basically engine. this is basically building a new ship all over again this isn't worth the effort <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that's the Sorry answer for that. every yeah everything they've done from like the rendering engine to the networking to the modularity it's just like oh We'll be back in a few years. You're good. Yeah, it's it's it was one of those things where it's like, whoops, uh, and now they've they've got they 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 they've committed, so they're like, well, fuck, we have to do something with this. Yeah, they 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 sold the ships with the modularity stuff, and now they yeah. have to do modularity stuff. It sucks. I know. Welcome to the real world where work is work, and if it was meant to be easy, they would have called it a, called it your mom. <laughs> So what you're saying is your Carrick is easy? Yes. <laughs> easy to get into. It's got one ramp. And then if you're an EVA, uh, it's got like three different entrances. Your mom has three entrances? That's yeah. interesting. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, she's got like three holes you can get into. Uh and then and then and then she can also Okay. She can she can also hold uh, a Pisces and a uh mm-hmm. an Ursa. Ursa rover. Not even um, just one Pisces. She's quite quite volumetric, right? Yeah. So all the cargo you can fit in your mom? Plus a Pisces. She's like she's two great. Pisces. She's a great medical support. Yes. You know, um, she was, she's, she's got great bedside manner. I mean, they, you... they say on the webpage that the, that you can fit eight men into her, but we've, we've been able to get more than eight men into, into your mom. Yeah. Live for on the, Twitch. For that those, been banned yet. for the, for those of you who don't know, Carrick, uh, the, his Carrick is named your mom. Yes. It's literally all these, it's... all these really dumb jokes. Like yes. it's so easy <laughs> to make jokes about your mom. We do it yeah. all the time. <laughs> Wonder when CIG will. <laughs> we'll try to stop you from naming the ship your like, mom. I, that is the most tamest, tamest name you yeah. can have for a starship. I could, like, if CIG moderates me based on, like, that dumb name, like, they're going to have to, like, go through and, like, nut punch her. <laughs> so many. <laughs> like, sure, there's going to be a guy flying around in a cave. In a Carrick with like nut slapper or something on the side of it. <laughs> there, you know, someone named their ship D's nuts. You know mm-hmm. they did. Um, Sorry, named by eight ninety jump D's nuts. Too much fun now. <laughs> I mean, it, it is Star Citizen. You're not allowed to have fun, so I would God, imagine I they that, get moderate. I hope they let us resize the text ourselves. Yeah. Oh gosh. Hopefully, just a little bit. Oh no. Well, uh, you know, you can always go see an optometrist. You know, get those those happened. glasses with the bifocals. That that helps a little bit. That's fair. Yeah. By time by the time it's released, we're gonna need bi- I'm gonna need bifocals. <laughs> Put it on yeah. only when I'm looking at ships. Ship names. That was, uh, that's a joke about release of Star Citizen being a really, really, really long time from now. 
Yeah. All right. All right. So got I've got a couple of quick ones. One, Inner Hype says a tomato and a potato are walking down the street. The potato oh, no. gets run over by a car, and the tomato says, "Catch up." <laughs> Classic. But the tomato is okay, right? But the, the, but the tomato is fine. Why is cool? <laughs> potato ketchup Paul. uh i guess so uh <laughs> i actually looked looked up the history of ketchup it's pretty pretty interesting you know they used yeah. to make ketchup out of like fish paste first really yeah that was like the yes. the or an ancient roman uh uh, uh thing oh. it's like sauce industrial revolution ish times is what that's what i was looking at at least like they were using all kinds of different stuff and they couldn't figure out what would work until one dude was like hey, i'm gonna try tomatoes and mm -hmm. and finally figured it out uh, it's At the reason why the, the new it's, history it's the reason why there's so many uh different ways the different different uh suggestions to dip your fries into these days like uh my wife has the 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 odd sense of using um mayonnaise for uh for for it's not for, odd at all yes it is check yourself yeah <laughs> it's incorrect i'll check yourself <laughs> very weird <laughs> it's 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 uh for what i've heard is that's the 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 french way of doing things and then uh there's some places that use ranch you know, like see daddy's saying um oh. there's there's some people who use um oh, i'm trying to remember what all of the, the ones i mean obviously it's just like the mustard and other things like that honey honey yeah, mustard you got all kinds such. of stuff man so. there's like dude the amount of sauces that you can find in a grocery store are it's wild like i came yeah. over here and i lived here for a few years and i went back to the grocery store and i was like oh my god i could dip my <laughs> fries in so many things but that has nothing uh, to do with modularity huh yeah but but astro is aiming to sleep on the couch no i'm i'm a i'm aiming to to start a fight that's what i'm aiming to do with the start, start a fight with uh, with the wife yeah uh, you know we each, we, each, we each have our own ways of, of coping with life uh and me is teasing my wife uh Midnight Black SC asks, Paul, is there a possibility you could like the Redeemer if you could swap out the engines for something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing? Uh, maybe if they fixed the where your the modularity should be, it should be up top rather than down the bottom uh, or down on the bottom. But like the, the, the whole like the ship design area is off like it should it shouldn't be facing like it shouldn't have this broken neck. It should be more of a hump on the back. Um, there's a whole freaking there's a whole video of info runners that I'm supposed to do where how, how to mm -hmm. fix the redeemer and uh, on top of all of that it's it still has conflicting lore it's the only ship that has not just bad lore it has like nonsensical lore <laughs> so I, I need to be on that episode whenever you get to really rant about this oh, I feel it's, like it's going to go down in the books it's it because the thing about it is is that people think like I hate it because of no reasons or I hate it because it's a meme. It's like no, I dislike this ship at its core because it it represents everything I hate about game development. Everything I hate about game development, just, just pushing it out the door because they needed to do it. Game, it designed by by committee, designed to appease the the widest number of people. It is it is the most. It is everything. It is the antithesis of everything I like about games. So. Um, you. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's forced upon me. Uh, it, it's 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 the it's my uh, Sisyphean task to always have this thing. Uh, all right. Next question comes from Northern Trooper who asks, what ship oh. currently in game will benefit the most from ship modularity? I mean, the obvious ones are like the Caterpillar. galaxy. Caterpillar, galaxy, yes. Carrick, um, yeah. Endeavor. Yeah. The Endeavor really relies on modularity to be, even be a thing. Because it's, it's, it's basically, the, the base Endeavor is basically just a scaffold you bullshit to. Yeah. What do you think, Axis? Same thing. I mean, yeah, the Endeavor definitely because it's like Vertigo said, scaffolding with a cockpit on this end, engine on this end, nothing in between but scaffolding. Also uh, the Javelin, but we talked about that earlier. Almost want to say the pioneer too, but we don't know a lot about it, you know. Base building, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. We don't know if they'll want you to swap modules on base building. Mm -hmm. Oh, That's Northern Northern, Northern Trooper is is qualifying in game. I'm guessing in game right now. Oh, in yeah, game. Think. Okay, definitely uh, the Retaliator series because that's in game. 
Yeah, I would say I'd say the MPUV because the, the, the card I mean, Argo. Yeah, because the the Argo cargo is uh, like like that's its whole thing. Like that's literally its gimmick is that it can swap modules. Otherwise, it's just a tiny little snub craft. So I can um, really see it. Sorry, go ahead, tomato. No, I was just gonna say I stick them with the caterpillar. Caterpillar. Yeah. Vertigo. Hmm. In game, if what's what sh what what um, ship would uh, would benefit from modularity in game? I right said now. the Endeavor. In, like, well, right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, obviously the Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Yeah, I mean, if Caterpillar had some swappable stuff on it, like it's it it's the ship that just basically has the most potential. It's two spaceships practically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it 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 just being able to undock from it, you know, that stupid little gimmick. Um, I don't know where the hell that's gonna go, like. Why would you want to be able to? I mean, like, I guess if you have an unloading timer, like to be able to like detach the ship from the side of it and just fly off and go do adventures while it's unloading, that's kind of cool. I think the go. whole section's supposed to be an escape pod, though. That's a, it's a, it's a, it is an escape pod, it, but it's its own little spaceship. Oh, it has a power plant, shield generator, cooler, weapons. They're the weapons for the pilot controlled weapons. That's that's the spaceship. Right. That little that little and it has engines on it too. So, but you're, you're able to, you could just park the caterpillar somewhere and then just detach the pod and just go off and do something else if you want to while you're waiting for that thing to get unloaded. Kind of like a modern day semi truck. I definitely agree with that. All right. Uh, I'm going to reject some of these because we've got seven questions left and we've been streaming for. Uh, mm -hmm. this, this this whole thing's been going on for... Gives that work in space. Uh, let's see. About like two hours. So... I can uh, be quiet. It's You're good. No, you're good. Uh, it, it, we, just, we just need to like... I needed to look through some of the, uh, the, the questions to make sure which ones are good and which ones uh, are more on the kind of e off-topic side. Uh, all right. So Guns and Glue asks, will the modularity mechanics in game encourage more modular vessels or will whole locked variants continue? I think we already answered that question. Yeah, yeah we I talked we, about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're, de we're getting, we're all, we're still going to get variants. I don't think we're going to, yeah. this doesn't mean we're going to go away with variants. I think we're just going to live in a weird world. The where thing about, modules well, the and thing variants about variants at the same time. The thing about variants is, like, I think CIG didn't want to do modular ships because they didn't have the tech ready. So kind of the same way we don't have ships that have, like, other ships docked to them, like the Constellation and the Merlin, because the tech wasn't mature. And CIG was like, eh, I don't know if we can support this. Mm. Um, but I think we'll see more of that stuff in the future. We'll see more modular ships instead of variants. But variants is still good money. Yeah. Because you're yeah. selling three different ships. And people, instead of like just buying like the base ship and the module they want, they have to buy the the ship they want, or they can buy both ships and get like yeah. double the fun, right? Yeah, it's like the freelancer variants also make sense. Like the freelancer like, variants still make sense in some cases. Like the freelancer has mm -hmm. the Dur, which has its own like like fuel yeah. refinery bay. It's got the the Miss, which has its own missile bespoke bay. It's got the Max, which is just got a double wide. The Max is a whole area. different ship. Like it's it's yeah. it yeah. has new engines right. and it's it's just bigger, right? New yeah. whole, the rear section of it is just bigger and has it's new, new engines. Yeah. So and, and then the regular base and like you well the base and the miss and the and the um the the Dur are all fairly similar. The interior is very different. So like that would typically be a module, but I think that it works the way it does. And I think that's the same way with things like the Zeus and other ships. There's still always going to be a place for variants where they can. As long as they're building at the same time, like build a ship and like we'll, we'll get more cutlass variants. We're never going to not get a cutlass variant. CIG will have a cutlass variant that does literally everything because A, it's the cutlass and B, it's the cutlass. Uh, it's kind of what it's thing. It just it does everything badly, but it does everything, you know. Minor add on. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get hard point additions on the hard locked versions more likely than we are going to with modulars oh. modular ships because with a hard lock ship where it's a set role you're going to have more options for external or maybe internal hardpoint additions instead of a module like radar you know sensors mm -hmm. whatnot but they're going to be very limited 
and you may have to sacrifice other functions for them to work. That's all I wanted to say. Sorry. That's good. Um, I'm looking through a couple more of the questions here. So Rush Mordor, uh, uh, Rush, Rush Mordor asks, right. when does when it comes to modular versus dedicated ships, shouldn't dedicated ships always outperform the modular ones and their modules? Meaning modules would arg uh, augment the ships versus uh, lose lose capabilities. Mm. I think so. I mean, there there will be some cases. Like I think, for instance, the 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 um, expanse is never going. It probably will be worse than say the Odyssey. But if they had mm -hmm. or the Odyssey, the uh, Galaxy editions. But I think the that if they had a large refinery ship. Uh, then it would be better than the galaxy. But the point of modules is not to replace the ship. It's more that you can do a sh have a ship that can do multiple things. Yeah. And you can have yeah. the modulars on the on your like in so the system nearby. And if yeah. you like you get bored of what you're doing or you want to do something else, you can just kind of swap to that other thing. Yeah. So so you don't I have to that. buy a like a brand new ship, new to, ship. Do new, yeah. to do the same thing. I get that thinking though. Like if you're if you're able to just use this ship and switch everything out, then it would make sense that the things it could switch out were like less efficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also keep in mind that CIG is going to double, if not triple the cost of whole starships in the next patch, probably maybe they talked about it on a star citizen live not long ago. I think it was a couple months ago. Uh, they said that star starships were cheap. So modular ships, mm -hmm. instead of like having to buy a whole new hole that does something completely different and having to buy, you know, upgrade that hole with new power plants, shields, coolers, weapons, whatever. Mm. You could take the ship you already have that's already upgraded and just swap out the modules, and now suddenly you're ready to do something else. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think they'll be super, uh, uh, like, um... And super, it's going to be a lot cheaper, right? Yeah. Than buying like, a whole new ship. I don't think it's super, like, efficient, but, like, for instance, I, I expect that one of the modules that's going to come with the Carrick is going to be a refinery module. That you can refine, so you can like stay Ooh. out there pretty much endeavor, like or, or oh. forever, just be able to refine your own f quantum fuel and anything else you find. But I don't expect that's going to be as good as say the module on the uh, on the Odyssey, which is built specifically to refine quantum fuel. So, like, that's that's its job. It's going to be better at that job and will probably be more efficient. But you know, um, but yeah. Uh, next question comes from Eric Stake, who asks, do you think the single seat fighters will have modules as well? Axis? <laughs> Putting you on the hot seat, Axis. Oh, yeah. Well, the Gladiator years ago was... Oh, I was going to talk about the Gladiator. Oh, Take sorry. it, Axis. Take it, Axis. Take, it. Take you it. You got it. Mine first. Okay. The Gladiator was mentioned... Possibly it is having tractor beam module, mining. What else, Vertigo? You're on. Cargo. I remember the cargo module for cargo, it. Cargo, cargo medical. <laughs> and we've heard nothing on that. And that brings into a question I brought up earlier. What's the size limit of modularity? How much ship surface do you need to fit a box that has stuff in it? You know? I mean, I'm just saying with their tech, is there a lower size limit as well as a upper size? Why would there be a lower size limit? You can swap guns on. Yeah. You could swap guns on a uh, Nox. Why couldn't you swap out a a, a chunk of of a like an engine or something on a so Nox? If the gladiator is modular, hypothetically, say we get Titan suits as a base object. Mm -hmm. Hypothetical. We're going hypothetical here. I don't think, I think that might be the very lowest part of modularity. Though that, that, something like that may be more of the hard point system. But mm -hmm. if they go full modular with Titan suits, uh, that's going to be a mess. I, I, it's hard for me to say because, like, the, the example they used was a Gladius instead of missile racks can have ammo racks instead. Uh -huh. And I th and I think that's that's a completely different conversation when it comes to modularity because I don't that's think that's like a hard point. that's a hard point swap. So, uh -huh. um, 
I so I don't know. Like, I don't think my initial reaction is no. I don't think modularity is going to have uh, is going to matter that much outside of something like say the Gladiator. But CAG has to remember the Gladiator exists for them yes. to remember that that, that yeah, happens. Uh, they, <laughs> so, but um, so but but bringing up the point of the hard point swaps, I do think that's another question in itself because that's kind of a question of like. We talked about it earlier, like swapping out an engine for a different engine entirely, or different. So that's what the M50 had, right? Or the uh, yeah. yeah, R had engine swappability. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, and it's something they've they've always wanted to do because even from the earliest versions of Star Citizen, the idea of having to be able to swap out like thrusters to uh, for other thrusters has been one of those things they wanted to kind of do, but that would require modularity <laughs> i think i guess the closest thing we're going to see with modularity is is stuff like that for um for sm smaller fighters what do you think vertigo i mean like cg seemed to move away from the idea of swappable thrusters a while ago yeah um but yeah like obviously like the, well, the gladiator was like that modularity was like talked about on its like concept day which was like same year as the retaliator like 2014 I don't know if you can trust that. I think CIG, like the Gladiator, the problem with the Gladiator, it suffers from success. It, like, it works. Mm -hmm. it fires the missiles. The missiles don't do much, but it fires them, and the lasers, they work. The turret works. It spins around, shoots the lasers. Mm -hmm. I don't really see CIG going back and revisiting the Gladiator other than adding components to it, even if they choose to, because, I mean, it's so close to gold standard. Just, just wash your hand of the stupid thing and make another ship and just move on making more money, right? Mm -hmm. How many people own a Gladiator these days? How many people fly the Gladiator? Have you seen another person fly the Gladiator? I, I have, but that's because I have a cult that follows me that follows the Gladiator. I, am, uh. I, I, I made a video on the Gladiator, and it did insanely well. And yeah. it, it is, is like, it has become the rallying cry for the, the, the Gladiator fans and, and, mm -hmm. and many other people. So I, I, I accidentally created a cult, is what I'm trying to say. Well done. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it's a, you you say who see who you, you did the thing, uh, Vertigo. You said no one uses it, and the chat is uh, actively here, so everyone in chat is <laughs> saying they use it. Uh, Space Spader, what do you what do you think about that uh, modularity for small fighters? I don't think we'll we'll see it very much. Um, again, it always comes down to what you say as a module components. Mm -hmm. Maybe thrusters, but like Vertigo said, they haven't talked really anything about that. Um, but they also didn't talk for a long time about us physically pressing buttons. So I feel yeah. like they just randomly will bring something up sometimes. You never really know, but I do think that modularity has a lot more leg room and just a lot more space to grow when it comes to like the multi crew ships, the larger ships. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the M50 engine swap. Yeah, that's when that's. A that's an example of like a modularity of a small ship is that engine swap idea, which it seems to imply engines will be swappable, but yeah, but also seems to imply that just the M fifties engine will be yeah, just swappable the M50, and they it's... gave up from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do this with any more ships. Okay. We'll, we'll ship this one. Uh, Rushmador asks with modular ships coming in with multitude of different modules, should we expect a new dedicated ships for each module? Um, that would be far better than the modular ones. I think we already answered this one, and the answer is probably yes and no. I think we'll definitely see ships that are better at certain things um, than modules. I don't. I don't expect. Uh, we already answered this one. I don't expect uh, modules to be able to outcompete de dedicated ships. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, Zelfrax asks thoughts on imposing an in-game dry dock fee to swap out your module. Do you think yes. they might have one or one or more uh, swapping, but uh, free at a, at, a, at a time? No, I think you're gonna have to pay for it. Yeah, I well, I, think... I know there's gonna be berthing fees eventually, yeah. landing and docking fees, mm -hmm. just to get a, just to get access to a public hangar. Yeah, you should have to pay to rent a hangar at a space station, and if you want to be able to return to that hangar like it was at your home location, you should have to pay for it. And and if you are paying, if you need to swap out a module, you're paying for the labor for people to do it. Yeah, and. And while I know people are like, well, I'll do it myself. It's like CIG won't let you do it yourself because I mean, there may be some ships out there that'll let you do that. You'll have to like cut off like the support struts and weld new ones on, mm -hmm. like the the Endeavor. Like you may be able to like a an Argo, MPU on an Argo MPV, uh, the Argo SRV. Grab the module with the tractor yeah. beam, move it over, kind of weld it in place a little bit. I I don't see us doing that stuff. Though. 
I think I think that's a little too too off the wall, even for CIG. So well, like it, like I said, all you gotta do is get in position, and you just kind of zap like struts. Yeah, and it just kind of snaps in. Ma- magic it up, you know. Magic it up. Uh, Axis, do you think we're gonna see dry dock fees? More than likely, especially for the larger ships. I mean, smaller ships, I could see a day fee, depending on where you are. Mm-hmm. Or I don't know if they'll do a day fee for small ships, but definitely capital ships, if it's a busy port like Terra, like, you know, a bigger ship. Yeah. Like, yeah. Makes sense, especially if it's a naval dry dock with a civilian yeah. access port. Yeah, they, they, that's, that's money. Uh, all right, last question. Rashmortar asks, what would you be expected to change or what would be the expected time to change modules on ships? Should it be minutes, hours, or days? Or, or would it also depend on ship size? Axis? Ship size and also module size. Okay. Yeah, I something... definitely, it would probably range anywhere from maybe a minute to could be an hour up to on the big ones. Yeah. I a lot of people in chat are saying days. I could see days, but I don't think it will be days. I wow. I yeah. I I could see like reclaiming ships require like large ships requiring days, but I think the swapping time would probably be I don't I don't hours. think they'll do days for like swapping mods, even on the bigger ships. I think yeah. Like on the javelin has a bunch of modules. Like if you swap out all twelve modules on a javelin, it'll probably be up to an hour. Yeah. Oh, that's. I'm More thinking, than you think. Space tomato. I, I'm thinking minutes for sure for like a small ship, like a retaliator, a few yeah. minutes. Um, like if the 600i was modular, maybe that would be like 30 minutes, 20 minutes. But then if you get into like the big ships, like a. Actually, I guess yeah, yeah, like a galaxy, maybe around an hour. Endeavor, yeah, I would be like yeah, an hour and a half, two hours mm-hmm. maybe, but never. Never like a crazy amount. Definitely not a day. It's it's important to remember chat and anybody else who's like, well, that sounds like too low. An hour is a long time in gaming. On top of yes. that, it's it's yeah. a, it's accelerated time in games, so it's actually a little bit longer. And oh. these ships, if you're even going like, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Like these ships were built to be module. Like it's like the Endeavor is literally just a scaffolding. So it's mm-hmm. already has bolt-on points. It's not like they're they're having to like weld a new piece together. It's just find the bolts, screw on the bolts for the location and add like, like, like su- get its support structure in and then you're done. So it's, it's, and you're talking about places that are designed to do this sort of thing. So it makes sense that it'd be a little bit faster, but an hour is still like, that's a, that's a penalty. If yeah. you're not playing, you're, just- pre- you're not paying attention to, you know, like, Oh wait, no, I need to get this version for my ship. That's, that's going to hurt. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> space that's when you're going out with like a bunch of people too because at yeah. that point you're not just you're not just like suddenly saying oh i want to switch out this this module like that's something you're planning so you yeah. go and do it like a few days beforehand or you do it log off and come back on later or something like that but it could be a problem during org planning events mm-hmm. like if you need that retaliator drop ship module and all your boys are already loaded up in trooper gear tomato and you don't have the module equipped to your ship. And that's that's your problem. That's not Star Citizen's problem. That like Star Citizen is a game that requires forethought and planning. Like this is this is something we've we've kind of realized as a as a player base for a long time now. That if you're gonna if you're gonna do an org event, but, but you Vertigo. better have all your ducks in a row but before Vertigo, you begin I, that event. I saw fun hey. game. Ape Ape Brain yeah. saw fun game. You can't yes. tell me I have to prepare now. <laughs> I know. That's, right? that's I'm mad. I I'm mad like now, Vertigo. I mad I push now button. I have to prepare. Why, why, no one said. No one said push button. Drop ship. Yeah. Why, no. No. Why, no. Why no one. That's why we don't buy modular ships that you have to remember <laughs> to swap modules on. You just buy, you know, a, a, a already pre-made <laughs> drop ship like the Vanguard uh, Harbinger, right? But that's but, but I, I demand the, fun or, without plan. Or, no plan. Own fun. Or instead of buying no a crappy, <laughs> shitty Aegis ship. That has this crap where you have to remember which modules in it. Why don't we just buy like a top tier high end anvil ship that just is good, right? <laughs> the Valkyrie, like let's just get that thing out. Like you don't have to worry about like it's just just everybody just for, fuck the guy who brought the Retaliator and forgot to swap the modules out. Let's just load up into my Valkyrie. Let's just go. Let's have fun, everybody. Yeah, but that requires planning, and you have to remember those things. 
and 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 we don't we don't stand. I thought you don't stand having to read. I thought I thought you came to you came to to game not to read. I'm here I to lead. To, I'm, I'm, I'm here to lead, to lead not to read. <laughs> no, the prowler is for people who love aliens. So there. Well, there, yeah. there's xenophobes and there's xenophilos. The, yeah. the prowlers for xenophiles. Um, I usually exterminate them on every Stellaris playthrough, though. So just keep that in mind when you're playing with me. <laughs> He's a true son of the Emperor. That's, uh, He's that's... a true son of the Emperor. <laughs> Caesar uh, was my great grandfather. Uh, what's uh, I was gonna say? Yeah, that's the last question. I, I think I, I think generally speaking, though, um, we got to we got to keep in mind when it comes to anything that has CIG is doing with times, it's going to change. Mm -hmm. uh, and CIG is more going to uh, err on the side of making it smaller rather than longer because they want they don't want to make people mad. So I could see I could see a swap out of like a huge module for a big ship taking 15 minutes um, and people being mad that it's taking that long uh, initially and then slowly increase it over time as, as they need to, because, you know. Some people will be like, I only have one ship and all the modules, and that's the only reason why I got this ship, and I'm mad. So, um, but we'll see. And that's the last question. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, so, thanks so much to Axis, Vertigo, and Space Tomato mm -hmm. for coming and hanging out with us. Um, yep. If you did, if you make sure you check out their 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 shows. Uh, when's the next um, launch sequence? Is that tomorrow, Space Tomato, or is it already it's already streaming? coming out on Monday? Monday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's it on? Uh, Engineering. Ooh. Who did you get yeah. to, 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 to talk with engineering about? We uh, I talked with Loud Guns. We nice. had a good talk about engineering. And if it's going to kill solo gameplay, because some people are just straight up believe you're not going to be able to play the game solo or, and have fun anymore. Vertigo, uh, you said you're, you're doing, are you still doing Pacific Drive? Yep. Well, we'll be doing it tomorrow after some Star Citizen, afternoon Pacific Standard Time. We're going to be doing Pacific Drive. Uh, we played Helldivers recently, so after we're done with Pacific Drive, we'll probably roll right back into the to Helldivers because they got a new Battle Pass coming yes. out the 11th. Another one? Yeah, 11th of this month. Nice. New. Uh, it's going to be like, uh, oh my god, I, I I just remembered I've been traumatized. They have a crossbow in Helldivers. Oh god, no. Like, I hate crossbows <laughs> in futuristic settings. Oh also, there's god. a crossbow in Star Citizen. Yeah. When's yeah. that going to come out, Paul? <laughs> I, don't ask me. I'm not Chris Roberts. <laughs> it's been two years. It's Novica crossbow, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Is it a grenade crossbow? Yeah, it's a Are grenade you... crossbow. So you can, you can role play a Rambo. Oh uh, my, give us. That's 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 oh, yeah, it's uh hell the bolt the bolt stick the bolt stick into enemies and then after a short delay they blow up because it's just you know that's just how it works, right? Yeah. Uh, and Axis, when when are you next streaming? Probably either tonight or tomorrow. I'm, I'm trying to get more active on Twitch and YouTube. Mm -hmm. I've lately been doing a lot more Operation Overdrive instead of salvaging. And I'm also trying to do some, you know, verse around the map kind of stuff, speculation of what systems are coming out. I'm also covering lore pieces and stuff. Nowhere near as good as you, oh lore. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's we we always need more people to just to cover lore. So whenever I hear someone like hype. When, when I hear Space Tomato being like, but like, oh, like I I don't want to like step on your toes, Paul. I'm like, step on me, step on me toes. <laughs> um, he likes that. I do. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> honestly, a, a good a good solid like a a good solid community a bunch of people talking about lore will bring more people to be intrigued by it you never know who you can grab and that just means that more more people cuz i i know myself which is i love lore from lots of different series cuz i'm a historian by by trade so i like that kind of stuff and uh i will find myself watching a, the a video on the same topic from four different creators just because it's interesting to hear their takes and see if there's anything different, different. Yeah. so yeah um so yeah, so what time usually do you stream, Axis? I'm trying to stream more in the middle of the day and early afternoons. Used to, I would stream later in the evenings throughout the week, but I'm finding that it's easier during the middle of the day, you know, that way then conflict with a lot of the bigger guys. Mm -hmm. My numbers have been a lot better. Nice. Um, and, and it's... And Access 0096 on on uh, Twitch, HD Vertigo on Twitch, and Space mm -hmm. Tomato Gaming on Twitch. 
Yes. 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 Okay. And of course, if you enjoy this, if you enjoy, enjoy listening to this, you want to watch it live, come join us at twitch.tv slash theastropub, youtube.com slash theastropub live at our new time of uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And we corrected it. It's 8 p.m. UTC, I think. So I think so, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's much more reasonable for those of you uh, across the pond, and uh, it's one of the reasons why Tomato was able to make it today is because it's not one o'clock in the morning <laughs> when he started. Well, it so, is now. <laughs> it is now. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for watching, and like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black. <laughs>